Hope Radio for the masses. Headline edition, July 8, 1947. The Army Air Forces has announced that a flying disc has been found and is now in the possession of the Army. If the game is rigged, change the game. Game changer. I occasionally think how quickly our differences worldwide would vanish if we were facing an alien threat from outside this world. This is Fade to Black with your host, Jimmy Church, on the Game Changer Radio Network and KGRA, the Global Radio Alliance. I need your help to get to the year 1985. Listening to Fade to Black with Jimmy Church on the Game Changer Network. Good evening, Fade to Black. Bespoke Radio for the masses. Uh, yeah. How you doing? Today is Wednesday, December 8th, 2021. Let's do this, man. Three hundred and forty two days into the new year, only twenty three days left. That's it. Twenty three days, three weeks, three weeks. We are live from a bunker somewhere in the middle of nowhere. A total undisclosed location. But it is beautiful. It it, it truly is. It truly is. I would like to welcome everybody listening all around the world, all across the United States. Hither and thither, to and fro, back and forth, up and down, east and west, north and south, far and near. This is Fade to Black for KJCR, the Game Changer Network, and the NX Network. Praise Hobbs. I'm your host, Jimmy Church. What is cracking, everybody? How you doing? Tonight, live from Peru, Jorge Luis Delgado joins us live. That's the best way to do it, live. We're here tonight to discuss South American ET contact. Now, well, uh, let's get the rest out of the way. Tomorrow night's another fader night with open lines all night long. All right. Friday, I'm on a plane. I'm leaving on a jet plane. I will be gone all weekend. Got some filming to do. Taping. Taping. Well, I got some hard driving to do. And uh, that's going to be great. So I'm going to do that all week, and I'll be back on Sunday night. And, uh, okay, so that's the week. And uh, now, what was I? I just had something. Oh, um, so the other night we were talking, um, and I think it mainly came up in, yeah, it came up in YouTube in the chat. Uh, The search, the search for a bike, and not the kind that you pedal. And uh, so a friend of mine, fade or not, PM'd me and said, hey, I want to sell, I want to sell my, uh, I, I just, I, I needed to go to a good person, uh, somebody that's going to appreciate it. And uh, I, I put a hundred miles on it in the last couple of years. So uh, PM me. And so I'm going to say this now, Rick, if you're listening, I need the details. I like the pics. I need the details, Rick. Quit messing around. I know you're listening right now. He listened to the show the other night, you know, and uh, was so inspired. Rick, Rick, (laughs) quit messing around, man. Quit messing around. Give me those details. Yeah, it's pretty cool. Okay, anyway, I wanted to put that at the front of the show uh, to uh, just get that out there to the universe. How's everybody doing? I'm in a great mood. I'm in a great mood every night, but tonight's extra special. And uh, uh, I'm 
uh, one of the things, okay, so uh, one of the things I, you know, I've, I've got to go work this weekend. I've got to fly out. But uh, then I got the notification uh, uh, to the city undisclosed, right, that I'm, I'm flying to. But uh, invited to a company Christmas party. Ooh. And I said, hey, <laughs> I should show you the text. Can I wear my Santa hat? And uh, I'm packing my Santa hat. Yeah. Yeah. So I'm going to do that Saturday night. Really looking forward to it. All right. Uh, where am I at? Everybody wants their own crystal skull. Everybody does. Go to EinsteinTheCrystalSkull.com. Go over to JimmyChurchRadio.com. There's a banner right there, Einstein the Crystal Skull. Click on that banner. Head over. Carolyn Ford has got the most amazing collection of crystal skulls. Small ones like, you know, well, this is tri-scale. This is tri-scale. But uh, you can get, you know... You can get something like this. This is tri-scales, but she's got nice little cruisers like this. And, uh, or, look at that. Just look at that. Don't you want that? You can't have this one. This is tri-scale. Thank you, tri-scale. See, tri-scale sits right here in the bunker. Right here. Stares at me. Or you can get like a baby, baby Einstein like this, like mine. Right? Don't you want? Get over there now. These come with a little pillow. So they sit like this. They come with their own little pillow. The baby Einsteins. So, yeah, head over and use the promo code. I've got a sneeze coming on. I feel it. Promo code Jimmy. That's all you got to do. 10% off of your order today. Get over to Einstein and Crystal Skull. JimmyChurchRadio.com. Scroll down. Banner is right there. Click on it. Perfect thing for the holiday season. Crystal Skulls are the gift that keeps on giving. All right. Follow me on Twitter at JChurchRadio. At JChurchRadio. Hashtag F2B is the sandbox right in front of me. Let's see. I bet your Triscale's already got stuff up. Triscale has got stuff up. Let me see. Let me see Triscale's gift. Ah, he's got... <laughs> what the... What the hey? <laughs> Uh, that's pretty good. The Jetsons, that's pretty good. Triscale, that's a uh, disturbing man. It's well done, too. Well done. Tara, love that. Mickey and Minnie, that's really cool. Santa Claus ad admits he prefers coffee to milk. Is that right? No. <laughs> oh, man. Kaz, yeah, there you go. There's a mini Einstein. There's a baby Einstein with a pillow. Right there. Thank you for that, Kaz. All right. Um, whoa, 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 whoa. At J Church Radio, hashtag F2BQ is fade to black questions. Hashtag F2B is the sandbox. All right. Lots of breaking news. Let's get straight to it. The legislative language has been revealed and agreed on in negotiations between key lawmakers meeting privately. It is now likely that Congress will soon send the Department of Defense and the intelligence community a set of statutory commands regarding unidentified aerial phenomena. You say UAP, I say UFO. The UAP-related provisions are included in the National Defense Authorization Act, the NDAA, now being advanced under the bill designated S-1605. The UAP-related language is contained in Section 1683, covering 15 pages of bill text. I put up a link on social media to Douglas Dean Johnson's article that completely covers everything in great detail, including those 15 pages. Go and check it out. I've got it up in so uh, social media now. And, and Doug D. Dean. D. Dean Johnson. You can follow him on Twitter, too. D. Dean Johnson. Uh, that is a long, comprehensive, well-thought-out, and well-presented article. Be prepared for a serious read. But go and check it out. I've got the links up right now in social media. Now, a planet 
has been found orbiting a double star system that is so hot and massive that some astronomers didn't think a planet like this could exist around it. The giant exoplanet was discovered orbiting B Centauri. That's right. A star pair located 325 light years from Earth in the Centaurus constellation. This is the hottest and most massive planet hosting star system found so far and has been given the name, the planet, B Centauri B. Astronomers were able to capture an image of B Centauri B using the European Southern Observatory's large, very large telescope in Chile. I saw a documentary on how they built that. It's incredible. The binary star system is actually visible to the naked eye. The giant planet, which is 10 times as massive as Jupiter, how big must it be? It is one of the most massive ever found. Absolutely incredible. Now, this just uh, this is kind of breaking news. This is going down right now. A swarm of more than 40 earthquakes in 24 hours is causing quite a stir right now in the Pacific Northwest. That's right. One of North America's most active fault lines sprung into life yesterday after a swarm of more than 40 earthquakes ranging from a magnitude 3.5 to 5.8 rattled off the coast of Oregon. The fault line responsible for the quakes is the Blanco Fracture Zone. It is more active than the San Andreas Fault right here in California, having produced more than 1,500 quakes of magnitude 4.0 or greater since the 1970s. That's insane. It's going down right now. They're saying, you know what? It's not leading to the big one, and that's what they always say. Uh, whenever you have earthquake talk, something happens. I'm serious, man. I'm serious. I'm serious. I remember... Uh, I remember in the 80s, we had this hot summer, and it was uh, 80, kind of been around 87. And uh, and I remember my friends, we were sitting around, they were all saying the same thing. Man, it's really hot. This is earthquake weather. Man, it's really hot. And it, it this thing, this conversation went on for a couple of weeks, and then boom, earthquake. And then four days later, we had an even bigger one. Ah, oh, absolutely crazy. All right. Uh, where am I at? Oh, yeah. Let me get back to Barefoot Wines. Barefoot Wines is releasing a collaboration wine inspired by Oreos. And I know what you're, you're going, What? <laughs> Oreo Thins Blend Wine. It's right there on the label. And on the label it says, A grape wine with natural flavors, with aromas of chocolate, and tasting notes that include more chocolate, cookies and cream, and oak, along with other natural flavors of blackberry and dark cherries. Now, I want to, I want to note every right now, no Oreos were harmed in the making of this wine. But there's no word yet if you can dunk the wine in a cold glass of milk. All right, let's get this show cracking. Happy birthday to today, Dominic Monahan. And I know what you Dominic Monahan. Yeah, Dominic Monahan. Today is 45. Yeah, he was the heroin addict bass player on Lost. I think he. Wasn't he in Lord of the Rings, too? What was the name of his band in Lost? Hair band, like uh, Gear Shift. <laughs> gear Shift. It might have been Gear Shift. Something like that. Terry Hatcher today is 57. Terry Hatcher. Yeah. Yeah. Terry Hatcher today, 57. I just had to have a moment there. Slipknot frontman Corey Taylor today is 48. Sinead O'Connor today, 55 years old. Kim Bassinger today is 68. 
Warren Cucurulo, one of the great guitar players, man. Warren Cucurulo today is 65. Of course, Frank Zappa, Joe's Garage, Missing Persons. There you go, 65 years old. Def Leppard guitarist Phil Collin today is 64. And guitar shredder Marty Friedman today is 59. Our dead guy's birthday today is Greg Allman, 1947 to 2017, died at the age of 69. Greg and his brother Dwayne formed the Allman Brothers Band in 1969, which reached huge international worldwide success with their 1971 live album at Fillmore East. Later that year, Dwayne was killed in a motorcycle crash. Greg also wrote several of the band's biggest hits, including Whipping Post, right? Melissa, God, I love that song, and Midnight Rider. He married Cher in 1975, stunning the world, by the way. And then they ended up divorcing in 1978. Greg died at his home in Richmond Hill, Georgia on May 27, 2017 of liver cancer at the age of 69. Happy birthday, Greg. On this day in history, OTD 1980, John Lennon is shot and killed by an obsessed fan, 25-year-old Mark David Chapman in New York City on this day in 1980. Fader fact. In 2019, the cardigan sweater that Kurt Cobain wore during Nirvana's MTV Unplugged concert sold for $334,000. It is currently the most expensive sweater ever sold at auction. And that is your fader fact. Tonight, very special guest live from Peru, Jorge Luis Delgado is joining us live to discuss South American ET contact. It's going to be a great show. This is going to be a show that you're going to remember for a long, long time. I want to remind everybody what's going on tonight. I've got a bunch of uh, tweets and images that are going to pop out uh, in uh, I think we've got the first set right after the top of the hour. And we've got a second set of images uh, at the bottom of the hour, at 8.30 hour time, right in there, okay? Now, uh, you'll see what the images are when they pop up. And hopefully I'll be able to steer the conversation and time it right because the, the tweets. Man, that's cool. Are those Oreos? Madeline, is that, are, are those LEDs inside? Are those, are those real? Are those like decorations for a tree? Those are cool. <laughs> I've never seen that. That's really cool, Madeline. That's really cool. It's uh, uh, Oreos lighting up uh, the cream on the inside. Too hard to uh, explain. Go to hashtag F2B. You'll see what I'm talking about. Um, but anyway, so... Uh, I got these images from Jorge. I saw them. Uh, I, I posted some today in Twitter or one, and I think one over on Facebook. I saw them at a conference that we did together a couple of months ago, the Conscious Life Expo. And uh, Conscious Life Expo Mini, the mini edition. The big one's coming up this February, by the way. Um, anyway, so back to the, and, and Jorge just blew my mind. So I wanted some of those images. So he sent me a bunch today and I've got those scheduled uh, to go out. And then he sent me, I'm going to give you a little, uh, preemptive strike, uh, for the show tonight. Then he, he goes, Jimmy, I've got this sculpture of an alien. I was like, you got a What? And he sent me those. Now, it's not going to be what you think. It's not like those Mexican artifacts. Uh, no, this is this is big, whatever it is, and it's old. Um, and I'm not sure what I'm looking at. It's great. It's amazing to see. So I've got eight of those images of this object, but I'm going to let him describe uh, what this object uh, represents. It's fascinating. It's going to be a great show tonight. And then tomorrow night is another Fader Night. 
with open lines all night long. Now I need to hit this River Moon coffee. Man, great show last night with Jason Quit. I forgot how much I missed that guy. I mean, we talk all the time, but, but the, the shows... I just, wow, that was a good show last night. And Jason, uh, he's not listening. He's he's having fun writing his book uh, up there in, in uh, Toronto. But uh, Jason, great show last night. But uh, I mentioned uh, yesterday that uh, Renee sent me uh, uh, the recent podcast of NPR's Fresh Air with Mel Brooks. And I listened to the first half of it yesterday, and I finished it today. And it's a really great conversation, and I, I don't know. I, maybe I can put up a link to it, and uh, I'm not even sure. I've got it saved. Um, it must be on NPR's website, Fresh Air, and uh, Terry Gross. But uh, anyway, it's a great conversation, and Mel tells the story about him getting hit by a car when he was eight years old. And I thought to myself, and I mentioned this last time on the show, I was like, hey, I was hit by a car, too, you know, and, and I want to tell my story. And now, I know that I've shared this on the show before. I'm not sure when, but it, it seems to me I remember talking about it, and it, it must have been years ago, years ago. Um, but if you have heard it already, I apologize. But let's turn back the clocks here to 1978. And I was a sophomore at Balboa High School in the Canal Zone down in Panama. And uh, every morning before school started, our little group of friends always met up at the end of this parking lot of uh, one of the buildings there on, on the high school campus. And on this particular day, somebody says, hey, we have a student thing in the auditorium, man, before lunch. Let's all skip it, and uh, let's go to Rocky's house, Rocky Gibson, and uh, and we all agreed. So after second period ended, we all jumped on a bus and headed to Rocky's place, and and on the bus it was five minutes up the road, you know, a mile away uh, from the school, mile and a half, very close. And uh, so we get there, we get to Rocky's house, and we smoke a bunch of weed. We're listening to Black Sabbath and Deep Purple, and, you know, it's all good. And then I looked at the clock, and I said, hey, I got to get back to class. And I left with my friend Bill White. And as Bill and I left Rocky's neighborhood, you know, we're on foot, we're walking, I looked to my right, you know, down the road, and I saw the bus approaching from a few blocks away and I could see it. And I shout out to Bill and said, man, let's catch that bus. So we don't have to wait for the next one. You know, here's one coming. So we take off running. Now where we were at that moment, the road split. So we've got a road in front of us and it separated uh, the, the main road, uh, you know, by grass and trees, you know, it's maybe 50 yards of, of uh, grass and trees in front of us. And the, Main roads on the other side. We dash uh, across the first road and and head through this little field. And I'm keeping my eye on the bus as we're running, and to make sure that we got there in time. and And I'm timing everything. And I was also hoping that the driver would see us, you know, running across, and and he would stop knowing that we were running for him. Right? Makes sense. And it's what my my pot in infused brain was thinking at the time, but uh, we were in full 15 year old sprint full speed. We're laughing. We're screaming, run across this field. And as we cross the grass, I can now tell that we just made it. And all I needed to do was run up uh, to the side of the road and, and go up this little thing and plant my foot on the guardrail that's there and launch into the street in front of the bus and wave my arms for the bus to stop. And the bus stop is, you know, right across the street. And I can see everything is timing, you know. And I, I saw it all in my mind. You know, that was the plan. I run up full speed. I launch off the guardrail. I'm looking at the bus and the bus driver. I'm gliding through the air. When I heard the car horn blast, <laughs> while I was in the air, 
I looked to my left, and all I remember was seeing a headlight. Bam. When I opened my eyes, I was lying on my back in the middle of the road, and I'm looking up at two cops, military police, MPs. And one of them said, he's, he's looking down at me, he's, dude, are you okay? And the other cop says, what were you doing jumping in front of his man? <laughs> and at that moment, I, I didn't remember anything. I forgot about the butt, the th- I, I, you know, I'm lying on the ground. And Bill runs up to me. He looks at me. And uh, the bus stops in the middle of the street. I'm off. I'm just confused. And Bill goes, Jimmy, man, I got to get back to class. And he turns around and splits, and he gets on the bus. And the bus leaves me there in the middle of the street. The MPs immediately call for an ambulance. And my head hurt. My whole body was feeling pretty nasty. I was scraped up, you know, from bouncing off the street for I don't know how far I flew. But all I could think about was getting back to school before I got in trouble. But they wouldn't let me go. And I asked them for a ride. I asked the cops. They had a, it was a cop pickup truck. I said, man, take me, just take me back to school. They were like, no, man, you got to go to the hospital. And uh, then the ambulance arrives. And they checked me out in the street, and then they put me on a stretcher, and and off we went, man. They threw me in the ambulance, and I immediately, I'm in the back of the ambulance. I'm like, hey, I don't need to see a doctor. I'm fine. Take me back to school. And at first they said no, but I kept at it. We only had like five minutes before we were going to pass up the school, and they agreed. The ambulance literally dropped me off at the BHS school main entrance right in front. So I'm stumbling out of the of the ambulance up the main walkway, and I hear Mr. Levy, the vice principal, yell out of his window, Mr. Church, come to my office. I'm the only person in the front of the school. I get to his office, and I sit down with him, and I tell him the whole story. I tell him everything. His son and I were really close friends, and Mr. Levy and I knew each other, right? And I thought he was just going to say, okay, man, go, go, get to class. Instead, he turns to me and he goes, two Saturday detentions starting this weekend. I'm like, dude. But my parents never found out about anything. To this day, they don't know what happened. The funny part is, uh, for me, that those two MPs were probably 20 years old. They were kids, and I must have really freaked them out. The bus driver saw the whole thing. He saw me leap into the air. I must have really freaked him out, too. And as for Bill White, my friend who left me in the street, we got together in Phoenix, where he lives now, and we went out to dinner. And one of the stories we laughed about and we talked about was this one. But I did ask him. I was like, dude, why did you just leave me in the street? And his answer, he goes, dude, I had pot in my pocket, man. (laughs) True story. And yes, today, I always look both ways before jumping into the street. That's right. I'm your host, Jimmy Church. This is Fade to Black tonight, live from Peru. Jorge Luis Delgado. Now, we've got a bunch of images that are scheduled. They'll be popping up, and those are going to start happening at the top of the hour. Then at the bottom of the hour, we've got another set of images coming through. All that's going to be on Twitter. You can go and check those out. I'm your host, Jimmy Church, on the Game Changer and UnX Networks. This is Fade to Black. I'll be right back with our guest, Jorge Luis Delgado, right after this short break. Stay with us. This is Nicole Church, daughter of you-know-who, and you're listening to Fade to Black on JimmyChurchRadio.com and the Game Changer Network. You're listening to Jimmy Church and Fade to Black on the X. (laughs) 
You're listening to Jimmy Church Fade to Black. Fade to Black will now pause for alien identification. The station that talks the net. Introducing the Game Changer Blend from River Moon Coffee that delivers a customized blend made specifically for the Fader Knots. If the game is rigged, change the game. It's a bolder cup with some bite. Game Changer is the coffee of choice for those that prefer an organic dark roast that is slightly lighter and milder, but it's still dark. With wild notes of pecans and chocolate with a rich, balanced, full-bodied cup that is roasted to perfection for a great coffee to start your day as an after-dinner coffee or anywhere in between. Artisan, small batch, roasted to perfection. USDA certified organic, all River Moon coffee is freshly roasted and packaged in the USA. Just go to rivermooncoffee.com or click on the banners over on our site and use the promo code F2BBLEND for 15% off of your order today. Rivermooncoffee.com. This is the only way forward. This is Fade to Black. Make contact. This is Jimmy Church of Fade to Black, and you can get our podcast for just $2 per month. All you have to do is click on the podcast banner over at jimmychurchradio.com. Hi, folks. It's trembling times, and fear is pushing emotions, which in turn pushes health the wrong direction. Do you ever get an ache because life is uneasy? Try Life Change Tea at getthetea.com. Life Change Tea works on your digestive tract, helping to move food through quicker and comfortably so your health is spot on. Life Change Tea may not help with world issues, but it will help with your digestive issues. A glass a day helps keep the intruders away. So, change your life today. Log on to GetTheTea.com. That's GetTheTea.com. If your health game is off, get on by ordering Life Change Tea. GetTheTea.com. And while you're on our site, look around at the great non-GMO organic supplements. And if you're a sales shopper, go to our specials page and see what's for you. I've been drinking the tea for 12 years, and I'm sure glad for its health benefits. Again, that's getthetea.com. Getthetea.com. The tea that makes you go. The new KUNXDB, the UNX Network, bringing you the best in paranormal programming in premium, high-definition streaming audio and video. Log on to the network at unxnetwork.com and check out the growing lineup of programs, including Jimmy Church, Whitley Strieber, Micah Hanks, and many more. Sign up for the free UNX newsletter, follow the UNX blog, or pick up the latest edition of the UNX magazine. Be sure to follow us on Facebook and Twitter. So check us out at unxnetwork.com. Tap the show page and the calendar so you never miss your favorite live shows and podcasts. We are your portal for all things paranormal. The X, explaining the unexplained. Nine out of ten geneticists agree. Fade to Black is not your father's radio show on the Game Changer Radio Network. Hi, this is Rob Reiner from Anvil, and you're listening to JimmyChurchRadio.com. What's up? I'm Chris. What up? This is Kyle Matthew, and you're listening to Jimmy Church Radio. All right, welcome back. Fade to Black. I am your host, Jimmy Church. Tonight, very special guest, live from Peru, Jorge Luis Delgado. He's joining us live, and tonight we're going to discuss, well, all things Peru and South America. You know, South American ET contact. Tomorrow night is another Fader night with open lines all night long. Tonight... It's all about Jorge, and we're going to talk about the history of VT contact in South America that continues through to today. He was born in the Andes of Peru, descended from the native cultures of the Quechua and the Aymara, and he was 11 years old when he became a Chacaruna, a bridge being, and he shared this solar heritage in different parts of the world. 
He has participated in television shows on the History Channel and more than 10 episodes of Ancient Aliens. He is also the author of the books, Andean Awakening and Inca Wisdom, Return to Happiness. He uh, presents to the world the gate of the Wilka Uta. We're going to talk about that tonight, better known as the interdimensional gate of the Lord Aramu Muru. Both of his links to his websites, Contiki Peru and Thai, I can't, I can't even say it, Taipicala.com. I think I got that right. And I would like to welcome for the first time, Jorge Luis Delgado. Jorge, live from Peru. You got to love technology. How you doing? Very good. It's great to be with you and uh, remembering those uh, special moments that we are living now together. Yeah, no and the experience, the connection with the Star Brothers. Yeah, there's no doubt about that. And I really enjoyed our uh, week together here in Los Angeles. And we're going to come back to that. But first, or hey, you get the first time guest disclaimer, okay? <laughs> Which is this it's just you and I sitting on my couch having a conversation as friends. And where the conversation starts, it starts. Where it ends, it ends. But we're going to end as friends. There you go. We're already friends, but we will continue to be friends. You ready? Yes, of course. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, uh, I love your laugh, by the way. And um, uh, I have uh, told the audience right after you and I met, um, and we became friends very quickly. And and I really appreciate that. And when I when I interact with somebody that I get, right, and that gets me too, you can feel it. And and I couldn't I couldn't stop myself from asking you questions uh for those uh few days together. And I told I came back on the show, Jorge, and I said, Man, I met this guy, Jorge Luis Delgado. <laughs> and I, I said, I cannot wait for everybody to meet him. We're gonna get him on the show as soon as we can. And uh, it didn't take us too long, only took us a month, and uh, we've got you here tonight with us. Now, I want to start with a little bit of foundation. Um, you uh, sent me the, uh, some of the photographs that I was blown away by uh, that I saw here in Los Angeles, and uh, so I've got those. We're going to start presenting those at the top of the hour. Uh, we'll uh, go through the circles first, and then in the next segment... We'll get to the sculpture, okay? And I've got all of those images ready to go, and thank you for that. And I do want to say uh, thank you to Rosario. I know she's listening right now, and uh, she's just amazing. She is she is really cool. Okay, so um, the history, it, it, it appears to us now uh, that we are just starting to understand um, how long uh, the contact has been going on in Central and South America. Um, and, and beyond that, how long the cultures down there and around you have known about this and have embraced it, right? How long has this contact been going on? Well, the contact comes from the pre, pre, pre Inca times, you know? I mean, uh, much earlier than the Inca culture. But of course, the official history doesn't accept yet. Uh, we must say that in most of the nations in the Indian world, uh, we believe that uh, on the sky, there are many bridges that connect with the ancient ones, with the, with the elders from the space that we call the space brothers. You know, for example, the Southern Cross, which is a very important constellation here, uh, Orion Belt, uh, Pleiades, uh, we call Chacana. Okay? Okay. Chacana means bridge. Well, but these Chacanas are in the sacred river, Wilcamayu. So the Milky Way, we call a sacred river. So, the, the picture is that if there is a river there, those bridges are to go from one side of the river to the other side of the river. But one of the elders told me, you know what? This is not just to go from one side of the river to the other side of the river. 
this is the bridge to return home. So if we are talking about the origin of in the stars, suddenly when you explore all these archaeological sites, all these Inca, pre-Inca buildings, most of them, besides to be connected with the sunrise, with the solstices or the equinoxes, also during the night plays a different role. It plays the connection with the stars. And many of the temples are aligned with the Pleiades, with the Orion Belt, with Sirius. You know, it's amazing that all the cities at the night has a different frequency. I mean, all the places have the same energy, but at the night, it seems that the moments when we start to receive different frequencies in those places, and in special when those constellations or those stars are rising. Now, um, is it does it surprise you that there is a sudden interest, not only from the United States, but from around the world, um, in Peru, in Chile, in Argentina, Brazil, uh, where uh, there's a focus now. And when you were speaking up here in Los Angeles, you had everybody's attention, right? And 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 everybody wanted more and more information. Does it surprise you that this focus now is on Peru like it is? You know, there is a very interesting energy that uh, it is uh, opening the attention of the people mm -hmm. because uh, it it has to do with their own ahayu. Ahayu is the soul. It is the spirit, you know? And when we see our space brothers, those are spirits, but multidimensional beings, you see? So we are connecting in a level of frequency. But of course, we think it is just a curiosity from the mind, but I believe it's much more than that. It is really about the soul. In the soul level, we know very clear, you know, in our tradition, we believe that we are children of the light, okay? And as children of the light, we are love, we are in service, and we are wise. In that wisdom, we know exactly that we are connected with the star systems. That's why we don't just observe the stars. We anchor the different frequencies that those stars send, but even much more than that. The Space Brothers coming from different directions, they're kind of weavers. What well, they're weaving, those are filaments of light. And, you know, in the Inca culture, the Andean culture, we talk so much about those subtle energies that comes from the stars. That's why it's so special in the Mesa, which is, an, uh, you know, it's a, a healing tool, we can say, you know, it's a bundle with with a textile with stones inside one of the most special the most appreciated stone is the one that comes from the upper world that we call the hanach pachacuya the stone that comes from the stars or the one that came with the meteorite that hit into the mother earth and from there it comes drops that is a blend between the, the meteorite and the Mother Earth, whatever it touch, it burns. So those are the tectites. Hmm? Yes, 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 yes. And, and, and I want to continue talking about this. Um, wh uh, where are you right now? You're getting ready to, to go to a couple of very special places. I want you to share with everybody where you are right now. Uh, I am in Peru, but right now I am uh, in Lima waiting some friends that is coming. I'm going to take them to Lake Titicaca and other sacred places by Cusco. Now, uh, do you have, I, I, 
I have to ask, uh, you know, because uh, Titty Kaka just brings up so much in the imagination, right? There's so much going on there and around Lake, Lake Titty Kaka. It's just not just the lake, right? Um, so you have that, but then you have Cusco. Do you have a favor? If, if I was going to go to Peru today, where would you take me first? Well, you know, uh, usually we go to Urubamba, the fields of light, but because I want to make it easy you're arriving because there the altitude is not too high like Lake Titicaca because Lake Titicaca is 3,800 meters, it's 12,000 feet, but Urubamba is like 8,000. So it's easy, softer starting by Urubamba. But uh, I, if you are used to the altitude, I would say, okay, let's go to the lake. Let's go. You know, it's very special. This is a new name, Titicaca. One of the old names of the lake is Wiña y Marca, which means eternal city. You know, one of the interpretations of this eternal city means that, oh, or the place or the city, Wiña y is eternal, Marca is the, 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 the place, you know, Wiña is eternal and the Marca is the city, place, town. So this is the place of the eternal souls. And when we talk about the multidimensional beings, could be one of the characteristic. But besides that, there is an awareness that everybody who connects with the inner sun, the father sun, the galactic sun, mm -hmm. we remember that state of consciousness that we are an eternal ray of light. Okay, so the place of our souls, of our, of the spirit is really about this lake. Besides that, this is the place where the mythology starts. You know, there is a beautiful legend that it says, once a golden disc from the space arrived to the Sun Island, to the sacred rock, and from there started all the histories, legends, and, you know, the origin of these uh, cultures that from the pre-Inca times, like the Pucara, Tiwanaku cultures, start to show up as a, the most incredible mystery, because still now we cannot really explain how was, you know, cut the stars, how they move huge stones, and they the symbol, the iconography in all those buildings, in the monoliths, in the portals, are just amazing. I posted the other day, uh, uh, knowing that uh, you were coming on the show tonight, and uh, I posted, let me let me pull this up, just, just stay with me. I posted the lyrics from Frank Zappa, and it's it's a song called Inca Roads, and so I just I just said to everybody just just check out this. And for some reason, it is not in my feed. Where is it? Okay, you know what? I'm going to do this. Um, I, it's like disappeared from my feed. I think I've been hacked. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> but but here, check this out. This the, These are the lyrics from Frank Zappa. Did a vehicle come from somewhere out there just to land in the Andes? Was it round and did it have a motor or was it something different? Did a vehicle fly along the mountains and find a place to park itself? Or did someone build a place to leave a space for such a vehicle to land? Did a vehicle come from somewhere out there? Did the Indians, first on the bill, carve up the hill just to build a place for a ship to land? Isn't that, uh, isn't that interesting? And that's from 1975. 1975. Yeah, very interesting, you know, because uh, uh, there is a great awakening of this uh, awareness. This is uh, for us the new Pachacuti, the new cycle, when we start to remember, when we start to reconnect. That's why 
One of the names for this time is the Taripaipacha, the time to find ourselves when we start to see our essence as we see our origins and our interconnectedness with all the galaxies. Is it that, uh, like the way that this song is written and what it suggests and what you just said here, it seems that there was an openness that continues to today, but the cultures in Peru uh, had a relationship going on with E.T., and we're inviting uh, the, our space brothers and sisters in. They cleared places for them to be, and and they built these magical places uh, because of friendship, right? And, and this has been going on for thousands of years. Yeah, let, let me let me tell you. I don't know if I spoke about it. Do you know quinoa? Uh, quinoa, the, uh, oh, the cereal. The, yeah, the cereal, of course. Yeah, there is a beautiful legend. You know, it says that once when the space brothers had been living here in with the Mother Earth, with all of us, you know, um, we keep repeating, we keep returning. <laughs> you know, we've been together and suddenly they had to go, okay? But one of the girls, one of the space sisters was in love of a human, you know, okay. uh, from the earth. So he was asking her, please don't go away. I, I will not survive, you know, without you in this place. Well, she says, uh, well, there is another choice. All everybody from this uh, family, from this team is going to return. I have to do it. I cannot, uh, you know, do stay in. I cannot stay here. Well, he says, what about if I go with you? And I says, okay. And she says, okay, you can come with me, but I have to ask permission. Well, got the permission, you know. And then he went to the other worlds, you know. But he was not used to it. I mean, uh, he could not adapt to these other realities there. So he had to come back. So... Then they ask a condor to take him back. So the condor went to pick up him and he received a gift. That gift was quinoa, the golden grain. And she gave it to him and he's supposed to share with everybody. And one of the interesting things was that she said, this is the most special food for you. And I know, we know that you will share with uh, every human. Besides that, there is something interesting that is good medicine for melancholy. A oh. few, few weeks, no, a few months ago, I found an interesting article in a medicine magazine what is a cañigua, which is a kind of quinoa, uh -huh. is medicine for depression. It's a, it's a food, so you know, very important that helps the process to so release she wanted, those she states wanted, of... She wanted to on. help fix his broken heart. Exactly. Wow. But besides that, there is something else. I mean... Uh, the legend can teach you one thing, but in the Andean world, everything has many meanings, you know, like uh, the buildings. The building is not only for one purpose. Some people will say, oh, this is an astronomical observatory. Yes, but also it is a temple, also it's a, uh, it is a palace, also. Well, you know, it has many uses, a healing place, the place that is connected with the schools or all together at the same time. But of course, there is some priorities in some buildings, but still it's connected with the stars. It's connected with the direction, with the winds that comes from different directions. This is a culture of the light. And as culture of the light, it's so interesting how we see that every expression of life, the stars, 
the insects, the animals, the elements are part of this life and everyone brings contribution for this light. So all life comes on that light and that light is in service. There is no light that's not in service. There is no love that is not in service. And there is no light that is not wise. So it's interesting when we start to see all these legends about the quinoa, about the chonta, the power stuff, for example. Right. The legend says it was brought by the space brothers. They had to go away. It's the same history. And people were like, no, don't go away. Who's going to teach us to remember our powers? Who's going to heal us? Who is going to, you know, awaken the powers and, uh, and teaching and protecting? Some people believe it's protecting, but in reality, they've been sharing with everybody ways how the humans, we can find our own way. Uh, recovering our power and power as light. So it's interesting that still now we use the power stuff made from this wood because what they did is they manifest this kind of palm. You know, it's very tall that the people say it's a tree. So from the heart of this tree, we get this, this it's like the palmito, you know, the, the very, the hardest wood and some of the elders, and I know many, many communities, they used to touch the stars. You know, it is it is like the extension of your hand that you can connect with the energy of the stars. Sometimes at the night, you know, people is holding two power stars, mm -hmm. connecting, walking, you know, without any specific direction. Suddenly they feel like an antenna. <laughs> There is a connection here, right? And they start to, to pray or do some ceremonies with this connection. <laughs> I, like, I, like the, I, I like the way you did that. What, 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 right here, R right here. <laughs> and you know, well, but it's fun on, nowadays. Jorge, we got to take a break, so let's get that in. And uh, we'll, okay. we'll just continue when we come back. And uh, also, I want to remind everybody get over to Twitter, follow me on Twitter at J Church Radio. We're going to be uh, showing images here for the first time of these circles, crop circles, rock circles, ginormous circles in Peru. Uh, they are stunning. And we're going to get to that, too, after the break. Our guest tonight, Jorge Luis Delgado. I'm your host, Jimmy Church. This is Fade to Black. Stay with us. This is Fade to Black with Jimmy Church on the Game Changer Radio Network. Your one million gigawatt paranormal powerhouse, KUNX DB, VX. This is Billy Carson with ForbiddenKnowledge.tv. Forbidden Knowledge TV has just reached its one year anniversary. That's right. One year, and as a show of appreciation, we are giving all new subscribers a free 30-day trial of ForbiddenKnowledge.tv. That's 30 days to binge watch thousands of movies, documentaries, conferences, workshops, lectures, yoga classes, meditation courses, and so much more. So log on to ForbiddenKnowledge.tv from your computer or mobile device or get the Forbidden Knowledge TV app on Apple TV, Roku, Amazon, iTunes, or Google Play today and use coupon code 30 days free. That's coupon code 30 days free on ForbiddenKnowledge.tv today. Because you never got that pony you always wanted. <laughs> Damn it. Jimmy Church and Fade to Black on the Game Changer Network. Listen, I know and you know that you've always wanted your first crystal skull. Or maybe you're a collector just like me, but you just don't know where to go to find the real thing. Then I met Carolyn Ford over at EinsteinTheCrystalSkull.com. Carolyn is the guardian of Einstein, one of the most respected ancient crystal skulls in the world. 
All of her unique skulls have been imprinted sitting with Einstein in his sacred lodge and are carved from the finest gemstone and materials. Imprinting is the process of receiving the ancient wisdom from the master skull or master computer. Einstein, the ancient crystal skull. To see Carolyn's current collection of crystal skulls, just visit her store at EinsteinTheCrystalSkull.com or click on the banner over on our site. Don't forget to use the promo code JIMMY at checkout to receive 10% off of your order today. That's promo code JIMMY. Finding your first or next crystal skull is easy. Just visit EinsteinTheCrystalSkull.com. When you take the beans from Central America with dashes of Indonesian and African mixed in and then roast it to the dark side of fade to black, you create the ultimate brew of fringe. Introducing the fade to black blend from River Moon Coffee. Yes, River Moon's darkest customized roast was created for the love of fade to black. The alchemy of masterful roasting and smoking the beans is in every sip of this full-bodied, dark java. I need my coffee dark, deep, with distinct bittersweet chocolate highlights, just like the bunker. Leaning further into the darkness of the roast is Fade to Black Blend from River Moon Coffee. Just click on the banner at jimmychurchradio.com and use the promo code F2BBLEND for 15% off of your order today. Hello, I'm Katie and you're listening to my main man, Jimmy Church, on jimmychurchradio.com. Hi, this is Ray Sobs here repping the planet and you're listening to my good friend, Jimmy Church, Fade to Black. This is Toby Kebble. You're listening to jimmychurchradio.com. Don't hurt me, Jimmy. I'm only little. Hey, I'm Adrian Grenier. And this is Ari Gold. We're of the Honey Brothers. <laughs> We're of the Honey Brothers. Hey, I'm Adrian Grenier. And I'm Ari Gold. We're the Honey Brothers. And you're listening to Jimmy Church. The Revolution. This is Jimmy Church of Fade to Black, and you can become an official fade or not by just going to our membership section at jimmychurchradio.com. Hello, this is Serena Wright-Taylor from Conscious Life Expo, and you're listening to Fade to Black with Jimmy Church, who holds the Lucky Pony record for the best astrological chart since 1963. True story. This is Micah Hanks of the Graylian Report, and you're listening to Jimmy Church on Fade to Black. Welcome back, Fade to Black. I'm your host, Jimmy Church. Tonight, live from Lima, Peru, Jorge Luis Delgado. Very excited about tonight's show. And I can't uh, stress enough uh, the presentations uh, that Jorge gave here in Los Angeles uh, last month, a month and a half ago, uh, were extraordinary. And there were some moments where, and I'm not... Uh, today, uh, Jorge, today, nothing shocks me, right? It's got to be something, you know, like, whoa. And you did that to me like 10 times. <laughs> you did that to me like 10 times. And and <laughs> listening to uh, the audience gasp, you know, and uh, I remember uh, there was a moment. We're going to set up now uh, these uh, crop circle picks that are about to uh, hit um, is uh, there was a moment when I interrupted uh, your presentation and I stood up and I said, wait a minute, what are those little things there? And you said, the, th- that's people. And I said, wait a minute, how big are these? And when you started to go into this uh, with everybody, uh, I would say that for most, just like myself, we were seeing this for the first time. We had no idea. Nazca lines, Nazca mummies, elongated skulls, and, and the history of Peru and, and Cusco. We, we, we know about this. We've never heard about these images uh, and the story behind what you were presenting to everybody. And I was just blown away. Where... Uh, 
are, are these in one location, like the Nazca lines being in Nazca? Um, are these crop circles in one location? Are they spread out uh, throughout Peru? Where are they? Uh, they are in the high plateau around Lake Titicaca. There are many uh, communities, you know, around the lake where uh, they've been, uh, well, many of those had been uh, rebuilt 30, 40 years ago. We had uh, uh, many, many problems with the weather, as you know, the weather changes with the Nino, La Nina. We had too much uh, water in some occasions. We had to, some droughts. So many, many countries wanted to help and to prevent, you know, to stop having these kind of problems when it's too much water. The Japanese uh, organization, you know, non-profit organization arrived and they made a very important study how to stop or how to prevent. And they said, rebuild Waru Warus. What is Waru Waru? What, what were those lines for agriculture, you know? They built a, a channel, the clay they get from the channel, they put on the top of the other lines, strike lines, okay? Which is much easier, of course, to build strike lines, you know? During the rainy season, the water will be in the channel. During the daytime with the sun, because the rainy season doesn't rain all the day. You know, it rains two, three hours, the most, the strongest. But sometimes just half an hour and most of the time it rains during the night. So what is interesting is the water gets warm and the crops never freeze. So we have water, good temperature and fertilizer because inside of the water, it grows in the channel, it grows some algae and any insect, anything dead that it happens around these channels go to the bottom. So when it's the dry season, we get all these dry algae, dry things that is in the channel to fertilize the land. Mm -hmm. So this is for agriculture. That's why those were made, those been rebuilt, not all the the water waters, all the channels are rebuilt. There is some locations in some communities where they got some assistance. They rebuilt, and the place where we took the the pictures, those places, the elders at the beginning they didn't want to say they are very old because they didn't want to have problems with the government, you know, because most of the time. When you are in a in a pre-colonial building, you know structure, you know it, it will belong to the to the government some way. So the the people doesn't want to lose their property. So they say, well, this is new. I built just thirty years ago. You know when we had the flats. But I will ask why you will build in a circle in a perfect shape and with the rays and how you will make those, because to do that, you, you, you can see only from the sky. Well, he said, the truth is we rebuild what it was there before. So that makes sense. So that's why nobody used to talk about it because when we've, we've been in contact with these friends, uh, we wanted to return and we got lost. So we've been asking to other neighbors, and they say, no, I don't know about this place. What are you talking about? Right. They say, what, 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 the popular name of this uh, channel for agriculture. And they say, well, there is many places, but I haven't seen the round ones, the circular ones. Well, I told them, you know, there are many sites in the, in the Acora fields, you know, Acora is a, is a district you know, on the way to Lake Titicaca. Uh, near Puno, it's something like uh, 40, 40, 42 kilometers from Puno, uh, exactly to the to the sites. But there, were, there was a, an Italian lady that in the 65, 1965, something like the 70s, uh, she brought a small plane and was flying around the lake. She said there is many figures 
and there is some hummingbirds and some serpents and some designs of condor. Well, I was wondering, where is it? And some of the elders told me that there is many kinds of warwarus with different shapes. But what it was interesting for me, those circles definitely was built, you know, because the water war started in the period of the Pucara culture and Tiwanaku culture. You know, when we talk about Tiwanaku, we are talking about these famous monoliths, the famous, the, the, the portals and all of that. So we can see these places because they were found when they've been rebuilding those channels. One of the elders there told me that she found, or they found small pieces of ceramics that they were from the ancestors. So probably they were for special ceremonies, she says, the center. Okay, he was accepting as a sacred place. Mm. You know, even at some point they say, you know, I need land. Now I just start to raise some cattle. So I need land. Maybe I have to destroy this. I said, no, 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 don't do that, you know, because we, we will have an opportunity, you know, here to really explore a little bit deeper. If you need a help, something, let me know. We would, we've been talking, you know, ways how we can get some benefits for them. So now they're a little bit more friendly and they are accepting even visitors. At the beginning, they didn't want to accept any visitor, you know. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And we are now uh, with a project to build like a tower where the people can take some pictures. Because right now, when you are in the ground, you don't see much. You see a semicircles, you know, in some places, but it's not really very, very, very clear. The pictures uh, you have, we sent it to you, those were made with the drone. Yeah, they're with the drone. And um, I uh, and I want to thank you, Jorge. I got the huge high-res images, um, very, very big high-res files. And the pictures here, everybody, I had to uh, uh, bring them down quite a bit uh, also to get Jorge's name on these and copywritten because these are going to go all over the net. But uh, to, to, to be able to publish these. But looking at them in high res, you start to appreciate the size of what is going on because in some of these, uh, the first set, everybody, you can go uh, right now, uh, go to my uh, Twitter page, at J Church Radio, and I've got the first set of three images. Uh, the second set is going to pop up here in a, in a couple of minutes. And uh, the one uh, in this set that shows the double rings, right, with the connecting uh, lines yeah. in the middle, you can't even see. If, if you look at the little huts, right, that are next to it, Look how tiny they are. This is huge. You can see the plowed fields, right, uh, around it. You can see the agriculture going on. And that allows you to appreciate the size of this. If you're standing down next to this, you wouldn't even know what you were looking at. You would have to you know, be from the sky. Yeah, you, you know, I took a group. And I, I, we, we didn't have much time. So I want to show the many. So we went to this place with the two connected, we went to one. And they didn't notice that there was another one <laughs> near there connected with the lines, you know? So only later I was telling them, you know, it was, um, have you said, no? I, well, I thought that they noticed, but we had to run, you know, because there is so much nowadays to explore around like Titicaca. You know, there are many things, many aspects to really explore in this area, but not only to see with the physical eye, but to see with the spiritual eye, because, you know, when we see a circle, we are talking about a sacred space. So when we use the word muyo, muyo is circle, and muyo is also one of the names of divinity. So we say, so we are talking about the Illa Tixi Wiracochan, Tiximuyo Wiracochan. So different names of divinity, qualities of divinity. One of the qualities is the circle 
that the law of the circle that it is eternal. So the circle also it is considered like an eye. It is considered as a portal. So a portal inside of the portal of the portal, you know, it, it is just magnificent to see 11 portals in one of them and the other one, three specific, you know, it, it is very profound, the symbols of it. A few months ago, well, almost last, last year, I took some uh, shamans. I mean, this was a training, a special training for uh, the Andean shamanists. And we've been working with the new stars and with the mothers. You know, we talk the mother wind, the mother air, the, the mother fire, the mother moon, and all the mothers. Right. And uh, when we've been there, they felt that the presence of the mothers in that place. So they said, this is the place of the mothers. They said, well, you can experience the mothers and some other beings. The other thing is that we don't have most of the time you know, the opportunities that we can give ourselves to stay there, to stay overnight, to experience by the sunrise, by the sunset, and at the night, you know. So the alignment with the directions in one of them is with the middle direction. So there is something in the middle directions, you know. I mean, like southwest, northwest, uh, but in the other direction, so it is interesting because that's the way how the Mother Earth plays with the middle directions. There is a ley line crossing the most important power places, you know, between uh, the Mount Tunupa, Tiwanaku, Pucara, Cusco, Ollantaytama. It's the same ley line, you know. Mm -hmm. uh, it's so amazing and extraordinary symbol that represents the inclination of the mother earth when it's dancing with the father son now so the when, axis if we put one line is 23.5 degrees is it really 23.5 now <laughs> um uh i i don't want to let that go one of the things as uh this first set of images uh has uh, popped up the second set is going to happen in about uh, 90 seconds is that uh, the first question is, well, how old are these? And when we look at when, when the Spanish arrived and, and, and they're asking uh, everybody up on the plateau there, uh, who built this? You know, they see Pumapunku, right? They see the Temple of the Sun and they see these things. They see Titica. And, and the answers that they were given uh, according to legend, is uh, the gods built this place. We didn't build it. They thought that this was something that was part of the cultures that were there. Now the dating is suggesting as much as 15,000 years old, uh, some of these structures and monoliths uh, in and around Lake, Lake Titicaca. Um, would that include what we're looking at here? How old are these circles? Well, you know, the circles, the Waduwaru itself, we found also next to the site that we call Tiwanaku. Mm -hmm. And uh, as you know, uh, Arturo Porzmanski, you know, this famous archaeologist in Bolivian site, he used to say it is 15,000 years old. So the Waduwaru technology, the agriculture fields, uh, it started with Pucara and Tiwanaku. You know, it's more known Tiwanaku because in Bolivia they give much importance to this culture. In Peru, by some mysterious reason, we only talk about the Incas, okay, which is the last period. But we have an extraordinary culture that's called Pucara or Pucara where we have the pyramids, it's aligned with the sunrise and in a perfect, perfect uh, direction of the solstice. But even is that perfect that probably is that old that at some point they have to rebuild. 
you know, mm -hmm. they had to rebuild, they had to move some millimeters. But the, the archaeologist who was digging there told me, you know, they moved and we can see the evidence in the foundations of this structure. So this kind of designs definitely comes from the pre-Inca period. So if the archaeologists are talking about 15,000, uh, well, this is one of the theories. Some of the elders, a long time ago, they used to tell me maybe, maybe 40, 50,000, but, but of course it's crazy. I would say, you know, how come you can prove? It's not about to prove or not to prove because what we are doing is now we are studying only the skin. We don't see inside, you know? And in the skin, of course, we will find the last periods. Of course, when we talk about other cultures, other civilizations like Lemuria or like Atlantis, how old is that? Mm -hmm. uh, well, some of the others will say maybe 30,000 or 50,000. But the legend says that we had connection with these with this lost continents, that even in Peru we have two sites that's strongly connected with Lemuria, with the Mu, that's why we call the Mu Chic. Mu Chic is the Mochica cultures. Now, the other one is the opposite, is Chi Mu. Now we call the Chi Mu culture. But anyway, you know, the, the connection with the ancestors is so interesting because this Lemurian continent, the Mu, you know, where the Lei used to live, mm -hmm. Lemuria, has this legend of the solar disk. And the legend says when they transcend, when they had the ascension, the solar disk was brought from that continent into this continent of Abhyayala. And this is a disk, a symbol of transmuted gold. It was like, you know, the best gift that the masters, the space brothers, or the ascended masters, however we can call, but probably multidimensional beings, because from their love, they manifest this gold, you know, in mm -hmm. this disc that has incredible uh, activations, initiations to all the children of the sun. So the people, the leaders, that they, they the Malikus, Malikus is the leader, the Malikus is the who can fly, the one who has a, the big picture, the vision, how this humanity is going to develop, you know, how it's going to expand and how it's going to bring their uniqueness, their wild, their, their uniqueness, their freedom, their gifts into the process of evolution of life, you know? because all is about that, the evolution of life. But life as one, together with the plants, with the animals. That's why we believe, you know, all the creatures that they drink the milk of the Mother Earth is our family. So who drinks that milk? Water, plants, right. animals, right. humans, right. all together. It's an extraordinary family. But this kind of legends, this kind of uh, messages from the ancestors, it was the same, you know. Uh, when I used to be part of a group that we call the Rama group, maybe it's familiar to you, you know, with Sixto Paz and all those friends here in Peru. Mm -hmm. I was more with a group of La Paz, you know, because I live in, in Puno. So it, it is near to La Paz. So it was easy to be in contact with a group from La Paz. So we used to go to the lake, to different sites, power places. And one of the messages, very often we used to receive the same message, is that they are with us and they are to support life. And we thought that, oh, it is to support the human life. We thought only all is about the humans. But when in reality they've been talking about all life. You see, so it's interesting that the message from the Space Brothers was the same of our elders, the, the ancestors, with this beautiful legend, you know, the milk of the Mother Earth is water. And when we start to see what is water, what kind of mission has 
in this beloved planet. And when the science says, what it is ET? It's extraterrestrial. <laughs> See, the rest of it is it. When I talk to, uh, we got to take a break here in two minutes. Uh, when I talk to Michio Kaku, uh, not on this show, in person, right? And and I brought up Pumapunku, I brought up uh, Bolivia, I brought up Titicaca, I brought up Tiumanaku. And, and he goes, well, so, so how old? And I said, well, some studies are suggesting, you know, 15,000 years because that was the last time the stars were aligned. And, no, I don't want to hear about it. And I go, but, but Michio, there's this, there's this. You got to see these H blocks. You've got to see what's going on in the faces and the cultures. And, and uh, no, 15,000 years, no. 10, anything before 10,000 uh, BC, uh, no, no, not, no, no. Wouldn't even discuss it with me, Jorge. I mean, just shut the door. And I thought, and Michio's a cool guy. And he's got an open mind, and he is really into ET and contact and cultures and type zero, type one, type two civilizations. But he didn't want to talk about 15,000-year-old uh, structures in Bolivia or Peru. No. And I tried to talk to him about Cusco. No. No, just shut the door on me. And that's what academia does. Do they do – is academia the same in Peru are the universities open to this? Are the archaea are you know are are they open to a discussion with this, or do they shut it down too? Well, you know there are some uh, archaeologists there start to be more open, but what uh, definitely they don't accept. I am agree in a way, you know, because they said uh, some people says you know the space brothers are the ones who build this. Uh, well, I will say. Maybe not. Maybe the humans, the runas, the people with the runas, you know, made it. But with the advice, with the suggestion, with the teachings from the space brothers, because by some reason of the cosmos, the the message, the legend says, uh, they are not doing anything but remembering us our powers, because remember in the legend of the of the Chonta and the power stuff, you know, the, the message was, who is going to remember us, our powers? So everybody, this is an extraordinary world and everybody brings a contribution. So this interconnectedness with the Space Brothers was really to understand that wisdom is only one. There's only one wisdom in all the universe, the super universes in, in all. It's like only one life, okay? There's only one life. We are all one. Everybody is like a cell of the same body. Millions, millions of stars planets in all over over the super universes so this interconnectedness is so important to be aware how our ancestors absorb that energy and to open it's like to open the quantum field if you do that everything is easy you become one with the storm you can melt it, you can dissolve, mm. and you can make whatever you want to build. Mm. This is one of the theories that it comes that one of the birds, that is an Andean flicker, a woodpecker family, you know, they they build the nest in the rocks. See, how do they do that? They bring some roots, some plants, you know, into some place with the stones, with the tiny buildings start to move, some drops comes from the plant, and suddenly make softer the stone and they can carve a hole in a big rock in the mountains and build the nest there. So that is fascinating. It is interesting. Yes, that's fascinating. Maybe that's how Cusco was done. Let's uh, take our break right here. Cusco built with roots and grass. I knew it. Right? Our guest tonight, the one, the only, Jorge Luis Delgado, live from Lima, Peru. This is Fade to Black. I'm yours, Jimmy Church. We're going to continue. The, the second set of images is up. I want everybody to go and check those out. We'll be right back. We've got more pictures coming up next. Stay with us.
Way out here, we listen to Jimmy Church. You're listening to Fade to Black. Always on the edge of the hottest alternative talk, Jimmy Church with Fade to Black. KGRARadio.com ¿Qué tal mis amigos? Yo soy Mario Carson, el tiburón, y los invito para que escuchen a mi buen amigo Jimmy Church Radio. ¡Claro que sí! This is Jimmy Church, and I personally invite you to the 2022 Conscious Life Expo this February 4th through the 7th, live at the LAX Hilton in Los Angeles, California. This year, we have the most exciting speakers, including Linda Moulton Howe, Jacques Vallée, Whitley Strieber, Adam Apollo, Billy Carson, Daryl Anka and Bashar, William Henry, Caroline Corey, Susan Slaughter, Daniel Brinkley, Sarah Breskman Cosme, George. George Nori, Gail Thackeray, and many, many more. I will be hosting all weekend long, including the keynote Ancient Secrets panel on Friday night. Five vendor and exhibit halls, three floors of speakers, panels, and celebration. This is the biggest event of the year, and early bird passes are available now. Just go to ConsciousLifeExpo.com for the schedule, speakers, and information. That's ConsciousLifeExpo.com. Do you want to be an official fade or not? Of course you do. This is Jimmy Church of Fade to Black. Just go to our membership section at jimmychurchradio.com. This is Jimmy Church, and I invite you to attend the 20th Annual Los Angeles Conscious Life Expo live and in person this September 17th, 18th, and 19th at the LAX Airport Hilton. Connect with exhibitors, community, thought leaders, and friends as we begin to recreate the world. You can also watch the expo from the comfort of your own home. Live stream from the main stage in Los Angeles and from the main stage in London. Truly a global simulcast event broadcast around the world. Live stream and in-person expo tickets are available now. I'll be your host all weekend long from Los Angeles. And on Friday, it's my Ancient Secrets and Earth Mysteries themed segment with James Keenan. Caroline Corey and William Henry. And on Saturday, Daniel Sheen and I sit down for a one-on-one interview live. We have an amazing lineup of 25 speakers, including Bashar, Gail Thackeray, Kimberly Meredith, Whitley Strieber, Stephen Bassett, Daniel Brinkley, and Lisa Gar. Please visit ConsciousLifeExpo.com for tickets and info. That's ConsciousLifeExpo.com. And use that promo code JIMMY for a special discount. Fade or not, when you think about the future of our country and where we're headed, do you wonder about the food supply? I do. Disruptions in the food supply chain could be disastrous, and they usually occur with little warning. That's why the smartest thing you can do today is to stockpile emergency food, water, and other essentials. I personally recommend My Patriot Supply. They're the nation's largest emergency preparedness company, serving millions of customers for more than in a decade. In fact, they're the only source my family trusts for our preparedness plan. You should too. Right now, save 20% off a full four-week supply of delicious meals that provide 2,000 calories a day. Saving 20% helps too, doesn't it? Especially now. So go to preparewithjimmy.com and get ready. That's preparewithjimmy.com. There's no time to lose. Do it now. So, you love talk radio, then you'll love TalkStreamLive.com. TalkStream Live is always on, 24-7, with the best streaming talk shows. Find your favorite talkers and discover some new ones. It's free, readily available online, or on mobile with any smartphone or tablet. Finding your favorite talk shows all in one place has gotten a whole lot easier. Just go to TalkStreamLive.com. Be sure to download the free apps from Google Play or the iTunes App Store. You listen to us, and we listen to you. And so does the CIA. <laughs> KGRARadio.com. You are listening to Fade to Black with Jimmy Church on the Game Changer Network. Oi, oi, I'm Reese Evans. You're listening to Jimmy Church. This is Revolution. The Revolution will not be televised. The Revolution is on radio. Ciao.
Welcome back. Fade to Black. I'm your host, Jimmy Church. Tonight, live from Lima, Peru, Jorge Luis Delgado. Now, I want to remind everybody, tomorrow night, Fader Night. Open lines all night long. All right. Back to Jorge. Now, uh, we'll, we'll discuss these crop circles more in just a bit. But uh, Jorge also sent me a set of images that are about to surface. Now, um, also, let me explain to everybody before you freak out. Um, as I scheduled all of this stuff to go out today, uh, the first one uh, I scheduled and there's no images attached to it. <laughs> so, and I couldn't unschedule it. Um, and, uh, okay, the first one just popped up. And uh, there it is. Now, okay, so um, I'm going to uh, turn this over to Jorge because he described this to me as a sculpture of an interdimensional being. And, and Jorge, um, do you have any idea? The images are up now for everybody to look at. Um, how old is this uh, carving? This is from... Pucara culture. According to the archaeologist, the official history uh, gives the same period of Tiwanaku. That means the official history, talking about 2,000 to 3,000, some people says 4,000 or 5,000 years old. They don't give more. But as you notice, Mr. Bornaski was talking about between 12,000 to 15,000. But more than, than, you know, how old exactly it is, what is interesting is why they don't give more interest to this being. You know, if you see the face, it's exactly, you know, to the face of the E.T. of the movie, remember? Yes. You know, go home, go home. <laughs> you know, uh, it, it was funny when I saw it the first time that when I saw the movie, I said, well, it maybe it was inspired in this in this monolith because I always was attracted to this monolith. And uh, you know, when I gave more attention after I saw the movie, you know, I start to see because at some point I thought that it's just an animal. You see, right. this was just an animal. I don't know, but you can see it has hand, human hands. It's got elbows. And it's holding, yeah. Yes, yeah. and it's holding some instrument. You know, I don't know where in Mexico I saw something similar. It's like the astronaut, you know. It is holding something, you know. In I don't know if it's in Palenque somewhere, but there is some similarity. But if you see, it has many unusual things in the back, you know, has like a circle, you know, very interesting that it seems like a receptor. Yes. And in the other point, it has a, a hole that it ha it may be a kind of uh, like an astronaut cloth, you know, for to be used to this, the kind of, uh, atmosphere or oxygen or whatever they use, we don't know exactly. Right. And uh, the other thing is that it has the the hair. It has like a lining in zigzag, you know, and that's very impressive. And it is right now in the museum of Pucará. The museum of Pucará, you know, it is uh, between Cusco and Puno, where we have. This, I was talking about this famous pyramid that at some point they had to rebuild because it was losing the precision to the solstice, you know, of mm -hmm. the sunrise. Mm -hmm. Now, uh, th this is the first set of images uh, in, in just a few seconds. Uh, the second set of images of this sculpture are going to show up. Um, the circle, okay, they're up here. Everybody just go to my uh, Twitter feed, at J Church Radio, hashtag F2B for the sandbox, and you can see the sculpture. And uh, in the second set of images, as you go around the head and the eyes and the face is, is, is really incredible uh, on the top. But on the, the second image of the second set, 
you can see this circle on the back of the head that Jorge is talking about. That is, I, I mean, I saw that straight away, Jorge, and I'm trying to make sense of what that is. It's a perfect circle uh, carved thousands of years ago. And what was the purpose of that? And then there is another shot, the hole on the top of the head. What What's that about? Yeah. And then yeah. there's another um, on the other side, right below the chin, um, uh, where the arm is, there's another hole that is there, right? So here's the head, and then down right about here is is another, and it looks like something you would put your hand in. Uh, I, I, I don't know what it's for, uh, but what do you think that second hole is for below the chin? Man, that is a perfect E.T. face, by the way. From them, that's a Spielberg. <laughs> I mean, I was looking at it today when when uh, you described this to me, and I'm spinning. You know, I'm looking at all of the images. I went, man, he's got eyes on both sides. He's got a little nose. You can see that. Um, you can see the mouth and the side of the um, uh, the wrinkles on the side of it. It's it's like E.T. There's like wrinkles right here where E.T.'s uh, mouth is. So I went and looked at E.T.'s pictures today. And I got to say, that's really close. I'm, 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 I'm just blown away by what I'm looking at here. Oh, yeah. How big is this? You can see in the, the back. Yeah, you can see in the background uh, a couple of things to try to judge. But it looks like it's. Maybe, six, maybe two meters. Yeah, Two six meters. feet. That's what I was thinking. Okay. Yeah, and um, it, it is not very tall. It's not maybe one meter and a half, one meter forty high, but it is a little bit longer. You know, it because in the middle it's like it's like a, a little hole also, maybe for water and using like. A, uh, like a mirror, we call you know mirror to see the stars, but not only to see the stars, but to anchor the frequency from some constellation. Oh, again, that makes this sense. Is, that makes sense. You know, one one of the the elders, I was talking about these places. I was asking who built this, the Incas. The pre Incas or the ETs? And he says, What do you mean by ET? I was telling him, You know, the monolith of Tiwanaku, maybe those people, you know, this guy of the, the monolith, this, uh, uh, the, 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 maybe this is the family, the lineage of these people direct this. You know, something very interesting just a few, few months ago. Uh, no, it was more, uh, one year and a half, maybe two years ago. I took some of uh, the first uh, friends, uh, first psychics, you know, to the place. And uh, the psychic uh, told me, one, one of the circles, you know, uh, because each circle is different. And says, uh, 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 she says, I'm connected. Very, very, they want to speak. So really? Yeah, okay. Okay. What is this? And I said, well, this is uh, uh, spacey. Uh, and I don't think so. How come? What for? And this is for the human project. How you can prove that? And you know, it was there. I didn't notice. I didn't count uh, before. And he says, look, how many rays has this sun? 20. What is 20 in the human beings? Huh? 20 fingers. Oh. oh, I think that makes some sense, you know, because the, the first time there, he was really channeling. And then when I start to see each of these has different symbols, but in this other case, we could really feel one of the experiences I had in another place we call Inca Camaña, that it has some stairs, and uh, the elder ones told me, this is the stairs to the stars. Oh, wait a moment. 
it's very similar, you know, the shape of the natural shape of the rock, like the, in the Sun Island, the sacred rock, the house of the sun, the house of the moon, the house of the stars, many little holes. So he asked me, walk, walk to the top, but feeling about this possibility that you come from the stars. Say, so, wait a moment. Wait a moment. What do you mean? How, how I have to experience it? No, just feel it. Give yourself that possibility. You know, just open a little bit and walk with that feeling. That was incredible. So when I was listening this channeling, I had exactly the same feeling. You know, with this space uh, energy, the ET energy, the ET presence. So, you know, it could be many meanings, you know, about why those symbols, because it's not only about uh, our minds, it is maybe more about, you know, everything has a, a electronic pattern. And the electronic patterns are like sending some frequencies that we start to be more open. It activates, you know, some of frequencies in each of us. So it is like a weaving energies. So people can have the right cloth, the intergalactic cloth, that the league itself, it is like that intergalactic portal, because many legends says that the spaceships comes into the water and they don't return, you know. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So some of the elders, is, you know, maybe there is like a labyrinth inside, you know, like a portal that they go home just by being inside of the lake. That's why some people say there is no bottom because these spaceships, they don't return, you know. So this is part of the legends too. Yeah, I've often wondered what's at the bottom. And there has been, you know, some of the legend that, that I love about Titicaca is that there's a city there, that there wasn't water at one point. Uh, do, do, you, do you think that there may be evidence of a city? Yeah, you know, we've been doing a long time ago, uh, uh, assisting a group from a TV from Japan. Uh -huh. And uh, they they found some of the walls, you know, by Puerto Acosta and, you know, the other side of the lake. The yep, other side yep, of Puno, yep, 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 yep. And uh, the Sun Island and many other places, uh, they found some treasures, some walls, some and different, different structures. Uh, definitely there is something, you know, that we don't know. Uh, some people believe that the name of Winnie Marca, Eternal City, it comes from these cities, I mean, physical. I believe more that is uh, in an, another dimension, but definitely, you know, there was uh, once was drier, there was not that much water, uh -huh. and, uh, you know, it is not easy to have a clue because uh, the legend, the history, the official studies it says it is from the, you know, from from the glacier periods, you know, when the water was all the high plateau like an interior sea. So it was higher. But how come there is walls under the water? You know, that's that, that's why we say it's a mystery. Lake Titicaca is really one of the most mysterious places in the world. Because remember, even the, the doorway of uh, Wilcauta or Aramumuru, mm -hmm. you know, it's one of the one of the most mysterious places in the world where people can really can have a, the, the interdimensional or multidimensional energies experience. And how do you, uh, before we get to the break, how do we, and when we come back, some of this is going to uh, involve uh, Cusco too as well and and the, the megalith and the structures and the walls around there. But how do we explain at that altitude, so many scientists and archaeologists have tried to explain this and they really can't, but at that altitude, uh, no wood, 
nothing really to suggest a way to move and transport and quarry these stones, number one. But but the second part is no metal, right? There was no metallurgy. If we, we need to believe something here. So if you believe uh, um, academia, when the Bronze Age started, you know, copper tools, and then, of course, the Iron Age, that's one thing. But none of that existed, especially at 12,000 feet of altitude, uh, three, four, five thousand 5,000 years ago. It simply didn't exist. But this stuff was built, it was carved, and it wasn't done with chicken bones, Jorge. <laughs> How how do we how do we explain it? What what's your theory? Well, I, I believe you know in uh, this uh, the woodpecker, <laughs> the woodpecker, <laughs> <The> woodpecker. <laughs> you, you know, it, it is interesting that in some places the stone it looks like it was like a melted at some point yes 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 oh, especially okay. in like cusco in yeah. yep outside of tiwanaco outside of the archaeological park there is one spot where you can see that you know it's very very clear that it was like a, you know like a plaster or something you know flexible and in uh, in tiwana in a Oh, yeah, Taitambo in Cusco, in Sacsayhuaman, we can see some lines like somebody was using like, uh, you know, like mud. You know, maybe they dissolve the stones and they redesign and they give the shape because it's so perfect. This is one of theories. Other theory, maybe they use other instruments that we don't know now. Okay? Yeah. Yeah, so like chicken bones. When they bones. got the instruments, maybe the Space Brothers. That's just the theory. It, in reality, it's a, it's a big mystery because if you follow, you know, how it's tried up the lines are so perfect. Because if you cut with the hand, with a hard stone, you know, stone with iron or with natural, you know, always will break a little bit. And you cannot do that so fine and profound holes, very, very tiny, very, very small, you know, what kind of instrument you will use to do that? You know, nowadays you cannot do even in a wood, you know, yeah. kind of hole that has these these huge stones. I, so, I, it's uh, mind it, blowing. It, it, it's really impressive. Yeah, it's mind blowing. And you're absolutely right, though. Um, when you look at uh, some of the, well, it's all over the place. You know, you know, Pumapunku, Tiwanaku, Titicaca. This is all, you know, it's Bolivia and Peru, but it's all the same spot. It's all right there. Pumapunku, you can see Titicaca from Pumapunku, right? You can walk there, right? It's pretty close. How far away yeah, is it? Yeah, it's, it's close. But even, you know, one of the names of Pumapunku, one of the elders told me, it's not really Pumapunko, he says, it's Umapunku. What's Umapunku? It is the water doorway. So oh. some of the elders believe that was a port, one of the most important ports, because if you see behind the huge stones that is lying down on the floor, uh -huh. and we can see like a long line that it has both sides like a little terraces or stairs, very high stairs, like a like a port, you know, like for for boats arriving. So it, it's quite interesting the shape of all that area that they are still working there. Yeah, you're talking about on the west side on that wall. Uh, yeah, that's right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I've always wondered about that. And it is facing uh, Titicaca, which is right there. But uh, we're going to head yeah. to a break. But when I look at uh, those slots and the holes that are in those slots and they're perfectly straight, if I went to some stone carver today, you know, and brought him some piece of diorite or, or <laughs> red granite and said, hey, I need some slots cut with these holes and the holes have to be perfect. They have to be inside of the slot. And I need, I need it to be like that. He would look at me and go, Why? I can't do that. And I can't do it the way that you want it done 
it would take me forever. It would be impossible. And my answer is, well, they did it 5,000 years ago like it was butter. You know, so there's it, to say that we would have difficulty doing it today, we would. I mean, this is this is not crazy talk, Jorge. This is this is a reality that we are in. And each one, and here's my other point. Each one of those H blocks is identical. They didn't have, if you believe academia, they didn't have writing. They didn't have paper. They didn't have pencils. They didn't have a way to design, right? They're going to go, here's the design. Okay, now make me 50 more of these H blocks identical to this. No, they didn't have that back then. Somebody was helping them. Something else assisted them. And there's not uh, another way to look at it, is there? That's right. I agree with that. Somebody else was around, <laughs> you know, directing or participating directly or indirectly. And uh, uh, that's why, you know, one of the the names of the mountains, you know, we call the Apus. In the Aymara region, we call Achach, Achachilas. What is Achachilla? Ilya is light, a child is ancestors. Uh -huh. Ancestral light, the masters. So my question will be, you know, if the Apus, is, if the Achachilas, they were the interdimensional beings, multidimensional beings, are they the ETs? They embody right. in the mountains. Right, right, right. Well, that's a possibility too, because nobody says, when I asked some of the elders, is no, nobody says, no, I says, what? <laughs> that's an interesting point, you know, because most of the time we don't really question the origin of the divine. Yeah, yeah. We just accept. Yeah, 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 yeah. It, it, I, I keep using the word dogma. You know, I use it over and over again because once you uh, uh, once you repeat something long enough to the people, then it becomes fact, and that's all you have to do, right? Just repeat it, repeat it, repeat it, repeat it, and everybody just starts to believe it, and 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 that's what they think, and and that's how we move on. Yeah, because remember, most of the people when you come to Peru, people says the mountain is the apple. Okay, but the lake also is the apple. And if you go to the communities far away from the big cities and they do the invocation to the master Jesus the Christ, and you know how they call? They call saying, Apuyaya Jesus, Hampuy, Hampuy, Hampuy. So Jesus as an apple, you know. So every master is an apple, also, you know, because. The Apus really are the protectors, the teachers, the, the helpers, the silent watchers. So there is many, many services to life, not only to the human. So it fits in that idea right. that we have about the are multidimensional beings they choose as a body, a mountain, but it could be a lake, but it could be, you know, a valley, could be uh, could be the sea, different right. different apples, different achachilas. So uh, it is much there to, to explore, too. Let's take our break right here. What a fascinating conversation tonight. Live from Lima, Peru, Jorge Luis Delgado. And I, I met Jorge a couple of months ago here in Los Angeles. I'm very excited about this conversation tonight and sharing his knowledge with all of you. I'm your host, Jimmy Church. This is Fade to Black. We'll be right back after this short break. Hi, everybody. This is Rob Halford, the Mental Guard, on JimmyChurchRadio.com. Your one million gigawatt paranormal powerhouse, KUNXDB, VX. 
Are you ready to read about true paranormal events? Unex Media publishes non-fiction books about UFOs, ghosts and haunted places, time anomalies, cryptid creatures, and more. Just like KUNXDB Radio, it's all about unexplained phenomena. Visit www.unxmedia.com to see our list of great book titles by Debbie Ziegelmeyer, Gene Walker, Devin Listrom, Wayne Lawrence, Bill Spicer, and yours truly, Margie Kay. That's unxmedia.com. Why is it we're not very good with our health regimen until it's too late? We don't put oil in the car until the engine blows up. When the body's out of balance, your health is not so good. Give your body some love. Log on to GetTheTea.com. That's GetTheTea.com. Try our Life Change Tea, which cleanses you from harmful intruders. A clean colon is one of the ways to bring the body in balance. We also carry organic supplements to help you get where you need to go. So do your body a favor. Log on to GetTheTea.com. That's GetTheTea.com. You can even visit our sales page to save some dough. Uh, Does anybody call money dough anymore? Anyway, if you're looking for short, helpful health tips, go to YouTube and punch in Health Matters Now. That's Health Matters Now. So, log on to GetTheTea.com, shop, get balanced, then learn some cool tips at Health Matters Now. You'll be glad you did. That's GetTheTea.com. This is Jimmy Church of Fade to Black, and I only drink Fade to Black blend coffee from River Moon. Just click on the River Moon Coffee banner at jimmychurchradio.com. Promo code F2B Blend. This is the only way forward. This is Made to Black. Make contact. When you're in the house for longer periods of time, you can see them flying or running across the floor. Ooh, yuck. They're unhealthy, gross, and disgusting. Bugs. I loathe bugs. We keep a clean home, but occasionally bugs show up. Well, I found something that is tougher than bugs. Orange Guard. On contact, it kills hidden bugs, including ants, roaches, and fleas. Plus, Orange Guard is a residual repellent. All of the ingredients of Orange Guard are on the FDA generally recognized as safe list. Orange Guard may be used around food, humans, and pets. It comes with a 30-day money-back guarantee. Orange Guard, available at orangeguard.com, Whole Foods, and Ace Hardware. Gold loves chaos, uncertainty, and disarray. History shows us what gold does when people aren't sure, aren't sure about the government, the stock market, their jobs, or their retirement savings. Our national debt is skyrocketing. Gold and other precious metals are a defense measure against inflation and a stock market that might take years to recover. So what can you do right now to protect yourself? Call United Gold Group. We offer gold and other precious metals delivered securely within 72 hours. Are you worried about the stock market? We can also help you set up a real gold or silver IRA or a 401k. Safe and secure. United Gold Group makes gold ownership affordable. Call now and get up to $2,500 in free gold or silver with a qualified IRA. Call 800-753-8534. That's 800-753-8534 or visit unitedgoldgroup.com. You want to know a secret? I love ponies. I really love ponies. I'm serious. I couldn't stay sane without ponies to brush. Why fade to black? Because you never got that pony, damn it. This is Fade to Black with Jimmy Church on the Game Changer Radio Network. Welcome back, Fade to Black. What a great show tonight. I mean, I've been excited about this all week. We pulled it off, too. And, and, and uh, Jorge, welcome back. 
And uh, I won't tell everybody uh, what we had to do to uh, get connected up tonight. Uh, but when we finally connected today, we were pretty happy, weren't we? <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. And there's a three-hour time difference. So, like, right now, it's uh, it's midnight. It's midnight in Peru. And you've got guests, and you've got a big thing that you're doing, and, and you're up with us. So thank you for that. Um, now, uh, as much as I, I could spend a whole night with you uh, talking about Tiwanaku and Titicaca and Pumapunku, it's my favorites uh, right there. Uh, I, we could spend a, a whole night. But we've got to talk about Cusco, and this is uh, your first time on with us. I look forward to the next time you're on with us. But um, when it comes to Cusco, and that entire area, right? But when it comes to Cusco, and and I look at that, um, I am absolutely confused. And and I think that most people are. We think logically, right? We think logically. And we look at that and we go, who moved that, <laughs> right? I mean, that right there, who moved... And 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 you can uh, you can uh, even ignore how the shapes are formed and and put together. We're talking about 150 ton. You know, when you see a little person and a, and a rock behind them, and you and you see it, it 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 just it's confusing. It just doesn't make any sense. And then. You throw in when it was done, and you see the Inca, and you see the Spanish, you know, trying to uh, replicate and duplicate uh, something that was impossible. So let's just start right there. Let's start, at, you know, let's start at the bottom of these walls. How? 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 Uh, okay, first question. They These stones allegedly were quarried uh, in these walls. Uh, 25 to 40 miles away over hills, right? How are those giant monolithic boulders moved 40 miles without a wheel over those hills? How does that happen? Well, you know, nowadays the, the archaeologists believe those are the rolling stones. <laughs> well, using rollers, you know, pulling by a ramp to take the stones up. But uh, in reality, most of the, of the sites are nearby or in the same quarries, okay? Uh, of course, there is a stone that it comes from uh, 40, 50 kilometers away, mm -hmm. but most of the sites in the same place, you know, there are quarries. Uh, I believe, personally, I believe that there is two kinds of stones. The ones that it was carved, you know, in the Inca period, uh, which was trying to do the megalithic, which is really from a, another pre pre prehistoric uh, period, you know, uh, even we can talk about other races with other kind of gifts that they could build those, so uh, they could move the stones. Uh, there are many legends that some people, I don't know if it was a way to try to explain that when the Inca start to talk to the stones and to move the stones with that with that kind of tongue, the, that kind of the words, the commands, you know, to move the stones. Uh, by some reason of the cosmos, there are those legends. But what we think of Sacsayhuaman, for example, those are just incredible, huge, 150 tons, you know, uh, you know, I was building a retreat center uh, in Urubamba, you know, so it became a hotel, and uh, I, we found many big stones there. So we hired some machinery, and you know the the owners of the machinery they, they charge very expensive to move some stones. 
and it was broken. <laughs> no, we had problems. <laughs> it didn't work. <laughs> so they had to stop. And we decided to don't move those storms because, you know, it was really too much for this. So you left, you, you just left them there. Yeah, we left them there <laughs> and we carved them. A little cut there, a little cut over there. Right. And we made some monoliths, you know, the monoliths of the uh, in Tiwanaku, the one of the contiguous one hand in the heart, the other one in the solar plexus. Yes. We have one of, of four, no, no, it's uh, almost two and a, three meters high. So it's a little bit bigger than the one of Tiwanaku. So this is the kind of stones we found there in the, the property. So it's interesting that it it is impossible for me that a, a group of humans to move one of those. Uh, even using the, the rollers technology, I mean the huge stones, definitely it must be another technology right. that we don't know right now. Right, right, right. And uh, here's another crazy thought. So uh, we're going to go back to uh, pre 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 history, and I'm I'm the leader of the village, right? And and I turn to you, Jorge, and I say, we're going to build a wall, right? <laughs> and we're going to build it th this high, and. And that's all we're going to do day and night for the next hundred years. <laughs> and, and you're going to look at me and say, why? We don't have any enemies. We're not being attacked. There isn't anything. There isn't a reason to build a defensive wall. And that it's not defensive. It's not a military construction. There wasn't uh, any evidence of any of that going down in pre 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 history. What is the reason for building these giant walls and the, and the terraces too as well? We didn't even get into that. Well, what's the what's the reason to build these walls? Well, you know, it's it's the same thing like in the, in in, uh, in Machu Picchu. Why in those places, you know, when you can build in some place where it's much more easy in a flat area or, you know, I believe that it has to do with the connection with the cosmos. Yes. And one of the reasons why, the, well, one of the questions would be why the Incas choose the highlands? Okay. Why not? in the lowest parts in the coast or in the jungle. You cannot see the sky at the night. In the coast, maybe four months. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. The rest of the year, you don't see much mm -hmm. because it's cloudy. But one of the reasons the elders told me that the, our ancestors choose the highlands because every day it is possible to connect with the father son mm -hmm, mm -hmm. and at the night to connect with the stars. Even there is a legend that in Machu Picchu, for example, it was built with the shape of a condor because some of the constellations that they used to connect often, it disappeared. So it was such a Big, big, big Pachacuti, big changes that the planet moved so much that it was not there anymore. Okay? So they said, what are we going to do? So let's do, let's build, you know, the power place that it can give us access to this constellation that it was important for them. You know, even there is a friend who published a book about Machu Picchu, where he talks about that legend, that, that theory, about the, the meaning of the condor. Because if you see from Huayna Picchu, from the top of the mountain, mm -hmm. uh, one mountain is Machu Picchu, the other one is Huayna Picchu, from the top of it, you see uh, down the city, the design of the, uh, the architectural design of the city, is like a condor flying. Is it really? So the question, yeah. So the question was why they will build like that. So and then connecting some of these legends that 
you know, the this uh, this uh, ET experience, you know, the extraterrestrial experience of the one who was in love of this uh, ET girl, uh, he returned using a condor. So the condor, besides many meanings, one of the meanings is connecting with the star family. The uh, the walls um, uh, are one thing, but in in the center of Cusco, those constructions that are there with the asymmetrical blocks, you know, and and so in, in, in the walls, you know, rounded, and you can see it was kind of mold, but but in in Cusco, it, they're they're perfect, right? But they're asymmetrical; they don't make any sense. It would take four. I don't know who the engineer was that would be designing something like that, but it doesn't make any sense. And when you look at the the Inca and then the Spanish construction, right in 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 uh, the business district, I you know in that area, you can see the level of construction got worse. Right, <laughs> it's 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 crude. It's rough. The Spanish didn't know what they were doing. The Inca kind of knew what they were doing. What went down in the pre-pre, uh, that is that is some of the best construction in the world, and it's still there to this day. Yeah, it, it is, uh, you know, with much, much wisdom, with much service. Because remember, uh, light for our ancestors is power. Light is love that is in service mm -hmm. and it's wise. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So everything the awareness was to be in service to life. So we need places to anchor some of these frequencies, energies coming from the cosmos from other dimensions. So we had to do the best to let these energies flow mm. easy to harmonize the energies of the mother earth because on the mother earth it is a little bit wild the energies but not not dangerous i mean when we see one when we hear the word wild we believe oh danger mm -hmm. no it is unique it is authentic, not domesticated, free, you see, but with common sense, because everything is interconnected, everything is proportional. There is a weakness, but there is a great gift. Remember, Machu Picchu is in a place where there is a fail, a geological fail, and the Incas knew that. Mm -hmm. So that took as an opportunity to anchor refined energies from the cosmos, from the humans, from the offerings, the people that's to the Mother Earth. So there is many, many aspects that when we or most of the people, the theorics of the new science, whatever they are using, it is the rationale, the Western point of view about life, about uh, about agriculture, about the cosmovision, about the spirituality, whatever. Remember, the first Spanish thought that the Incas had religion, when in reality it was more about the spirituality. It has more um, uh, the the awareness what it means, the light, mm. and what means the light. So there is gratitude to all those masters who brought that support to bring that awareness. So, Because religion has to do more with the human mind and the, the ability to create ways to control people. Yeah, yeah, to bring you in and control. No, there's no question about it. Uh, the the spirituality side of things is opening you up, which, you know, is the opposite of religion. Uh, but I have to ask you then, are you wild? <laughs> are, well, are you wild? You, you, 
you know, th this is one of the most important projects we have. Everybody we are. The only thing is that we are undoing the domestication right. we had. You know, one of the elders a long time ago, when he will introduce to myself, he will say, Salka Maria. What's that? Well, what is Salka? Salka is what? Remember one of the apples here, one of the mountains is Salkantai. Okay? So one of the masters was wild. And it is about it. If you see mm. in all nature, what is wild is more in a harmony than the humans. You know, the domesticated. <laughs> what, what, what yes. Here. <laughs> I like the way you say that, though, that we have to undo the domestication. Um, <laughs> I, I, I like that. Um, oh, that, I wanna... <clears throat> that is that is the real freedom. It is, it is, it is. I'm trying to live that way now, um, <laughs> believe it or not. Uh, okay, uh, before I have to let you go, and I don't want to let you go, I could keep talking. Um, I wanted to ask you about, uh, this was brought up in the chat here, uh, about the, the famous tunnels um, underneath Cusco. And I remember the, the first time that I heard about them, um, and I need you to help me out with this, that um, once they were discovered, uh, a university came in and, and professional archaeologists and, like, shut it down. And the, that the discovery was made. Have you been in the tunnels um, underneath the temple in downtown Cusco? Well, uh, in the one from Coricancha, you're talking probably the one of Santo Domingo. Yes. The one where the that the one connects with uh, with Sacsayhuaman, where the students, you know, some students they came in and they show up, you know, by the church, and they knock the the, the wall in the church of uh, of the Coricancha. Yes, yes. Uh, I was outside, but inside of that one, no. But I went to the other, or the other end of this tunnel that is in Saksa and Saksaywaman, the big tunnel. And I explored many of the tunnels around this area and the tunnels about like around Lake Titicaca. There is in many places, most of the pre-Inca side has a legend of tunnels, but tunnels that you can see and you can experience, like uh, the Exxon area. Exxon, it's called Lanlayunik, Lanlayo, and that place, Lanlayo, is like a, a multidimensional being, you know, that shows up in the tunnel and, and talks to you or plays with you. You know, it's a bit tricky, you know, it's like uh, the one who makes jokes or trickster, or a, a trickster, bit, yeah, trickster. Yeah, yeah, exactly. And the, the one uh, which connects with the inner world, like a guardian of the entrance to different uh, inner inner cities or the inner inner population, uh, because there is a um, presence of beings multidimensional beings you know that was one of the last projects i've been with the ancient aliens about the inner world tunnels now um so it is true then you can't you can't go uh to santo domingo where the temple is and uh now and that church was built with stones from the pre pre prehistory too right that that church is well, on it, top of something much more ancient. You know, I have a property exactly in the same area uh -huh. because the the temple was not only what we see now, the walls on the top of the pyramid. That was like a pyramid. It does look Ford like a pyramid. Avenue it does. It and does. Yes. The Tuyumayo Avenue and the terraces will go up. Yes, and what is the very top? That's the only thing we we now we see is the temple, but when in reality all the streets and all that area 
was the main center of the ley lines coming together because wherever you see ley lines is connecting power places and wherever you see ley lines and power places are tunnel histories, ley chains uh, mm -hmm. all over. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But if you see the ley lines, you know, arriving to all the directions that we call the circus, and if you see the points of the power places or the wakas or the mountains, the apus or the lakes, which is also power places, uh, you will see the different points like a spiral expanding. Now, but when you I see that, you have to fly. Yeah, when I, uh, oh, really? You see it from the sky? So um, I've, I've, I've seen a few documentaries of, of the temple. And and I want the audience to know. I mean, this people live and work right there. I mean, this this it's a busy uh, part of of town. But when I looked at the top of the temple, and I was watching the cameras move around, I saw it looked like a pyramid. I you could almost see the shape. You could see, and and the town is built up against it now, and it's hiding what was there before. I'm not crazy, am I? That's exactly what it looks like. And then the and so the tunnel, Jorge right goes from the center down. Uh, they found the original entrance in the church, and it goes all the way out to uh, Saxo Wyman. And they they did make they did get through it and come out on the other side, but you can no longer go through these tunnels. And it looks like to me that this was a pyramid complex connected with tunnels, right? I'm not wrong, am I? Oh, uh, yeah. You know, it's not only there. For example, in Machu Picchu, from the Condor Temple in the 1940s, in the reports of the archaeologists, they said, you know, they had to close one of the tunnels. Yes. Because it, it was dangerous. Mm -hmm. They considered dangerous for the workers there. For the employees, so they decided to close. And yeah, are you talking they about thought that it go to the watchtower only? Right, but probably it has other connections. Too. Yes, and so in the back of the watchtower, and and that second in the back, there was a little room. There's grass and things, but then you walked in, and there was a tunnel entrance in there that they closed off um, in Machu Picchu. Yeah. Yeah, near there, there is uh, many, many things. You know, we, we, we don't know much. We just know about the skin of the site. Right, and, right. And uh, it is still a big mystery. And and still, you know, and still we, we just have a point of view. One of the things we need to learn a little bit more to have the big picture is really to practice how to access to other dimensions because remember those are multi-dimensional cultures cosmic cultures so if we have the ability to feel the energies the frequencies the vibrations we can have a bigger picture for now most are just theories from the mind now with um do you think uh, when you look at the door and the entrance in, in Tiwanaku um, that if that celestial alignment uh, was what we think it is, you know, 15,000 years ago, was that a portal? Was that a stargate? Or was it just something ceremonial? But do you, do you think that that was a portal to someplace else? You know, that, that was a ceremonial portal because the place to other dimensions is the flat rock without any symbol. Do you remember mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. the sun gate? If you're facing the sun gate, you go to the left side, there is a flat stone where everybody try to see, try to feel because the place pulls you. Yes. Okay. That is really the portal, <laughs> you know, and that portal is very magical. You know, I, I was just remembering something beautiful because from Geronimo's medicine back, once the elders, that the keepers of his medicine back, do you remember Geronimo, the Apache? Huh? Mm -hmm. From his medicine back, the elders, the keepers of his medicine back decided to send two meteorites. 
Okay. No meteorites, exactly. Tectites. Tectites okay? in the bag, yes. I didn't know about tectites at that time. And I was waiting that group. And the, the, this group was so excited. They said, we have a mission, we have a mission. And I said, what's the mission? And they said, you know, this is the story. It's very special from a very important master and teacher and warrior, Geronimo. Oh, I saw the movie, Geronimo, uh, the one who is a warrior. <laughs> said, yes, yes. Well, he says, I don't know, this is crazy. You should keep this in the States in a museum. You know, it's just the mind, you know? Right. I, I didn't know the Stones had their own game. So one of the things, the first thing I did, you know, uh, well, besides to be in Machu Picchu, like Titi Gaga went to Tijuana, I put it under that rock. You the did. flat rock. And the next group will bring a stone. Like that, every, every group I receive, even individuals will bring some stone. And I would take and put around that under, you know? Uh -huh. So I used to take seats so they don't see me, make a little hole deeper, as much deep as possible to put the stuff. And you know what? Many years later, we had the circle of people. First was the circle of stars. Are they still there? Yeah, yeah. They're still there. Well, at least I hope. But what is important is the intent of it, the stones. Because as soon as they leave the message, they create the circle, they create the frequency that it is activated. Sometimes it's just about activating, you know. But I think it's still there because now they don't let you touch the rocks, you see. <laughs> <laughs> the guardians use Western, say, boom, boom, your body. Nobody sits there. Nobody sits there anymore. Right. Because in the old times, you know, we used to do ceremonies everywhere, like everywhere in the world. You know, people, the archaeologists and the governments is trying to keep the people out of the most power places. So that's why, you know, I was thinking maybe we should create a, a wave of energy to talk with the governments, you know, saying that, okay, it's okay that they can charge, they can protect, uh, many things which is important, but there is something. We still need to use the places because it is more alive when we are in connection with that energy, when we are weaving those energies, when we are spinning the energies, when we are in touch with it. Can I get you, uh, can I, I don't want to end the conversation. Can I keep you for another 15 minutes? I uh, sure. Oh, that's what I'm talking about. Let me take a break right here. Let me get that in. <laughs> I've been so excited about this show. We have too much more to uh, talk about. So let's go into some overtime. This is Fade to Black live from Lima, Peru. It's Jorge Luis Delgado. And uh, we'll come back. We're going to continue this right after this short break. I'm your host, Jimmy Church. This is Fade to Black. Stay with us. Listening to Jimmy Church and Fade to Black on the X. Hey, what up, y'all? Sugar Vivica Fox here, and you are listening to my boy Jimmy Church on JimmyChurchRadio.com. Despite popular opinion, reading a book will not make you smarter. But listening to Jimmy Church will. This is Jimmy Church, and I personally invite you to the 2022 Conscious Life Expo this February 4th through the 7th, live at the LAX Hilton in Los Angeles, California. This year, we have the most exciting speakers, including Linda Moulton Howe, Jacques Vallée, Whitley Strieber, Adam Apollo, Billy Carson, Daryl Anka and Bashar, William Henry, Caroline Corey, Susan Slaughter, Daniel Brinkley, Sarah Breskman-Cosme, George 
Fujinori, Gail Thackray, and many, many more. I will be hosting all weekend long, including the keynote Ancient Secrets panel on Friday night. Five vendor and exhibit halls, three floors of speakers, panels, and celebration. This is the biggest event of the year, and early bird passes are available now. Just go to ConsciousLifeExpo.com for the schedule, speakers, and information. That's ConsciousLifeExpo.com. This is Jimmy Church of Fade to Black, and I take Life Change Tea supplements every single day. It's what I do. Click on their banner at JimmyChurchRadio.com. Are you ready to read about true paranormal events? Unex Media publishes nonfiction books about UFOs, ghosts and haunted places, time anomalies, cryptid creatures, and more. Just like KUNXDB Radio, it's all about unexplained phenomena. Visit www.unxmedia.com to see our list of great book titles by Debbie Ziegelmeyer, Gene Walker, Devin Listrom, Wayne Lawrence, Bill Spicer, and yours truly, Margie Kay. That's unxmedia.com. When you take the beans from Central America with dashes of Indonesian and African mixed in and then roast it to the dark side of fade to black, you create the ultimate brew of fringe. Introducing the Fade to Black blend from River Moon Coffee. Yes, River Moon's darkest customized roast was created for the love of Fade to Black. The alchemy of masterful roasting and smoking the beans is in every sip of this full-bodied dark java. I need my coffee dark, deep, with distinct bittersweet chocolate highlights, just like the bunker. Leaning further into the darkness of the roast is Fade to Black Blend from River Moon Coffee. Just click on the banner at jimmychurchradio.com and use the promo code F2BBLEND for 15% off of your order today. This is Billy Carson with ForbiddenKnowledge.tv. Forbidden Knowledge TV has just reached its one year anniversary. That's right. One year, and as a show of appreciation, we are giving all new subscribers a free 30-day trial of ForbiddenKnowledge.tv. That's 30 days to binge watch thousands of movies, documentaries, conferences, workshops, lectures, yoga classes, meditation courses, and so much more. So log on to ForbiddenKnowledge.tv from your computer or mobile device or get the Forbidden Knowledge TV app on Apple TV, Roku, Amazon, iTunes, or Google Play today and use coupon code 30 days free. That's coupon code 30 days free on ForbiddenKnowledge.tv today. Are you intrigued by Paranormal Talk Radio? You love the new Paranormal Radio app from TalkStream Live. You'll find a great selection of talk shows covering UFOs, ghosts, strange phenomena, and much more. Download the Paranormal Radio app now and start listening to the very best in paranormal talk entertainment, including the network you're listening to right now, the Paranormal Radio app, free in Google Play and the iOS App Store. It's not a lifestyle we chose. We were born this way. This is KJCR at JimmyChurchRadio.com. Welcome back. Fade to Black. I am your host, Jimmy Church, straight into overtime. Oh, man. I've only got 15 minutes left. I, do, I, I just don't want tonight to end. <laughs> I don't want it to end. It was a great conversation. Um, one of the things I wanted to ask you uh, that you and I uh, spoke about at, at the conference a couple of months ago, um, uh, I want to repeat the question because I think it's very important. Um, if... If I'm um if I'm a tourist and I go to Titicaca, right? And and I'm there. Uh I'm on the Peru side, I'm on the Bolivia side. But I hook up with a tour guide that is taking the tourists through there. Um are they talking about do they keep it clean? 
right? Do they stay on the dogma or do they talk about other possibilities uh, here? And I'm talking about ET. I'm just going to say it straight out front. Do they do they discuss this? And and what if I brought up ET? What would would I get shut down? What is it that the tour guides say? Well, uh, many people believe that it's not polite to talk about ETs. You know, <laughs> so uh, they will share. We have amazing guides. You know, I mean, they study five years at the university to bring you the information of our culture in many aspects, you know, in the anthropology, the archaeology, we'll talk about the plants, which is beautiful. It's very impressive culture in many aspects of life. But about it is in our society, we create something uh, some way not so nice. People sometimes don't like so much they believe it's about crazy people. I also used to think like that a long time ago, you know, before, you know, when I was a teenager at the beginning, you know, uh, uh, I thought that's a crazy thing, you know. Uh, uh, once I saw a book of Mr. Eric von Daniken, mm -hmm. you know, in, the, in one of the books, that, and I would say, how come there is crazy people that could lead, could read these kind of books, you know? And uh, <laughs> many years later, I was sharing the stage with him in in Brasilia. He was giving a talk, and my friends invited me to. Uh, the, 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 uh, are you familiar with the UFO Hacienda in uh, in in Brazil? I am. Yes. Yeah, it, it's impressive. I was invited. I, I I guide them, you know, in Peru and and uh, Tiwanaku, and you know, they, they are pilgrimage, they tour here in Peru, and uh, they after the, their visit here, they invite me to to go to the Hacienda. But this time I went to to because they are in Mato Grosso, the Sur, mm -hmm. and uh, I was in uh, in. In uh, Brasilia, in order to get a visa for to go to Bulgaria, my book was published in, in Bulgarian language, so they invited me to get a visa. I went there, and they said, "Come, there is a big conference here with Eric von Daniken and some other ones." So, so I was invited to give some talk there, and uh, I, I was sitting together. You know, there is some kind of energy that uh, is moving all these uh, where there is no escape. You know. <laughs> Everybody who's involved with the ET experience, they found a very unusual ways, you know, because uh, most of the time, you know, when you want to be very rational, very scientific, uh, of course, you 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 get your goals and you 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 really get where you want to where you want to arrive. But the the thing is that uh, having experiences that put you in one direction okay and then when you rediscover yourself that you have power you have light because power is light light is love service and wisdom for us for the inca tradition so it's interesting that all the humanity is rediscovered their soul because you know all this game of the vaccines is Everything to have or to don't have vaccine is about fear. So that is really an experience of frequencies. So we are getting the process to learn about what is frequency, what is vibration, what is energy. Okay. So what we need is really to vibrate in a higher frequency. That is what we are. We are designed to vibrate higher than fear. So we are designed to vibrate in the love frequency. So when we understand what is the message is when we are going through these situations. But this is the moment. This is the portal moment. When many people want to have a cosmic experience, you know what? 
the first cosmic experience is our own blood family. The blood family. You know why? Because by some reason of the cosmos, we have the family we have to expand our love, our service, our wisdom. So it is the easiest portal to vibrate higher, to learn how that energy is inside of us. We don't need anything else. But as much we release the blockages to be the light that we are, we are getting in other dimensions, in other frequencies. So I believe that whatever we are experiencing now always are good excuses to expand the new consciousness, the new day. And our, our brothers from the stars are assisting in this process. They don't come directly to change things, but we are getting the support. How important is uh, uh, Eric Von Daniken in that you first read the book, you didn't, you, you know, you, you just kind of left it there. And I understand that. Um, then you went back and revisited it and you understood the importance, but the, the thing that Eric did for us, not so much the Nazca lines or the, the pyramids or, or whatever that he presented in the book, all of that is great. But what he did do is force us into a conversation to, to think about something that, that is outside of the box. That's what he did. I was a guest on uh, his podcast when he, f he first started it. And, and he invited me on in, in the beginning. And it was an honor and a privilege. The first question he asked me, Jorge, uh, was, uh, he said, Jimmy, how did you get started? And I said, you. <laughs> <Right>? <laughs> and, and because it's the truth. But but also in that I'm not the only person that has this story, right? That's how important uh, Eric Von Daniken is here. Yeah, it's, it is. He started you know, the yeah yeah yeah. You know there is something interesting. I would say I am the opposite. I didn't like him, right. but <laughs> but let me tell you this. But it hooked my attention. Yes. Okay planted the seed because whatever you give attention is what you are <laughs> really magnifying because sometimes it is just you know the ego saying you know i am not a kind of crazy you know <laughs> right right <laughs> but in right. reality there is no escape to the consciousness that in this world we are surrounded by beings that it can manifest in different dimensions, but also there is something else that we have the possibility to see beyond that what the, what the governments or what the schools, what they teach us. So there is something it is about individual experience. It's like all the processes, all the process, everybody who is in a addiction. Nobody is going to help except the same. Okay? Yep. It is about the personal process. There is great support outside. The family, the friends, the ones who love that person, but only one can do it. It doesn't come from outside. It's the same process for everybody. Sometimes rejecting, sometimes accepting, but it goes deeper and deeper the way how you are feeling and weaving those energies. You know, because, you know, when I was with the Rama group at the very beginning of the Rama group, mm -hmm. we had amazing messages, amazing uh, experiences, uh, field works, we call, we used to go 
with guidance, you know, going to different points. Uh, anybody could be the, the channel receiving the messages and it would be precise. One of the questions I have to myself is, why, why am I doing all this? Exactly. You know? Yes. Do, 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 I, do I wanna do I wanna wanna take a spaceship to go to another planet? You do. <laughs> yes. Yes. So, Don't we but all? There is something. Right. I found myself. Everybody has different answers. Yes. I found myself that there is something that's missing. It's about my roots my connection with the mother earth with the father son our my ancestors how they expand the consciousness in a society with zero poverty nobody was starving in the inca period everybody had good food good cloth everybody had their own space for planting to be in service so, of course, you cannot separate. Everything is interconnected. So, you have the opportunity as you get your identity, identity of the uniqueness that each of us we are, the identification of the wild one that you are. But of course, when you say wild, people will say, eh, crazy. It's not rational. But you know, rational ratio is measure. So we made a measurable society, which is very close to a miserable society. Right. It's better to be crazy to believe in that love, the most amazing frequency in each of us. That's crazy. That's wild. <laughs> <laughs> That's wild. Perfect. And, and, uh, uh, one, one we are a good team, my friend. Yes, we are a I great think, team. You know, I have a dream. I have a dream to What's bring that? you to Peru and to put the tents in these crop circles and experience in some special moment, maybe solstice, maybe equinox, maybe pre this rising, or maybe connecting with the southern crop. Oh, I don't know. And then uh, visiting these megalithic places in all over Peru, so that will be fun. Do, do I get empanadas? Of course. <laughs> okay, just want to make <laughs> we, we got to have we got to have empanadas. Um, one <laughs> one last real quick question uh, before we have to say good night. Um, there is some chatter uh, going around in in my circles that there is a suggestion that in Nazca there are dozens, dozens of pyramids, and the government is aware of this. And these sites are, 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 are there and have been located. Can you confirm this? Are there pyramids that, that uh, the world is not aware of in Nazca? Well, you know, I think the information is already out there in all the area of Kawachi, mm -hmm. which is the capital of Nazca culture. And you know what means Kawachi? What? Kawachi comes from Kawak. Kawak, C-A-W-A-C. You can read from both sides, from left to right, from right to left. Kawak. Okay. Kawak is to see what you see, and whatever you see sees you. So Kawachi is the place where you see and where they see you. Who sees you? That's the question. Because look, most of the sites you can see only from the sky, right? Flying, but most of the mountains or most of the pyramids before the people thought that was mountains. And all those were many, many pyramids. Right. It's the same thing in the north of Peru by Trujillo Chiclayo, where Mr. Thor Heyerdahl was working. He found this beautiful place, the Valley of Pyramids. 
hundreds of pyramids with millions of breaks, you know, from the coast. Uh, it's really impressive. Uh, we have such a such a impressive structures in all the coast of Peru from the pre-Inca culture. It's, it's, it's just amazing. Jorge, thank you so much. And uh, I accept your invitation to Peru. Uh, it's going to be great. I can't wait. And I can't wait for you to come back up here and visit us too as well. Um, uh, we have uh, contikiperu.com and and taipicala.com. Is that where everybody can go and see your work and reach out to you? Yes, that's it. Or in Facebook, Jorge Luis Delgado. Instagram, Jorge Luis Delgado Chacaruna. There you go. Facebook, too, as well. And Instagram, you are connected, sir. Thank you so much. Thank you. And, and give my best to Rosario. <laughs> and, and tell her thank you so much. You have the best laugh and the best smile ever. And uh, I can't wait till we get to hang out again. Thank you so much, Jorge. What a great night. Uh, great, Donald. Thank you very much. You're the very best. What a great conversation tonight. Now, all of Jorge's links are over at jimmychurchradio.com. We've got it up throughout social media. Do go and check out all of the images that we posted tonight. And you can head over to Facebook, too, as well, and connect up with Jorge and see a lot more. I'm your host, Jimmy Church. This is Fade to Black. Jorge, stay right there. What a great night on the show. Tomorrow night is Fader Night with open lines all night long. Fade to Black is produced by Hilton J. Palm, Renee, Dennis, and Kevin. Announcers are Steve Harder, Gene Vitteau, and Mark D. Kovar. Webmaster is Drew the Geek. Music, Doug Aldrich. Intro, Space Boy, spaceboymusic.com. Fade to Black is produced by KJCR for the Game Changer Network, and this broadcast is only copyrighted 2021 by Fade to Black and the Game Changer Network, Inc. It cannot be rebroadcast, downloaded, copied, or used anywhere in the known universe without written permission from Fade to Black or the Game Changer Network. I'm your host, Jimmy Church. Tomorrow night, open lines all night long because it's Thursday and it's Fader night. Until then, I want everybody to be safe. It's time to fade to black. Fade to black.